pinky in the sky. A little bit of charm is flying high. I think Noah's going to win by 50 points. I'm visiting Australia and this whole football thing's new to me, but I want the Magpies to win. No, not very good. Oh, it! Six foot six, Pasco. Yeah, if Pasco can kick straight, we're a good chance. <laughs> we should win. He's got to Pas mark it yeah. first. Yeah. Put it this way. You either hate Port or you love Port, and I don't love them, and I so I think Nord will win by ten points. The other magpies we expect to win. Cheers, cheers, the black and the white. I know the magpies, they am but us. It's the emblem of the team we love, the team of the red and the blue. Hello everybody and welcome to Football Park for the 1999 SANFL Grand Final. Yes, it's Port Adelaide and Norwood. And history tells us that these two sides met in the first Grand Final on the 5th of October 1889. So it's only fitting and proper that they meet in the last game of the 1900s. And these two great proud clubs will turn on a show. Stay with us. The ABC network will bring you this one right throughout the country. Port Adelaide got to the grand final by winning the second semi-final against the Eagles in convincing style, powerfully by 43 points. Norwood, on the other hand, have had to battle three cutthroat finals to come from fifth spot and the elimination final, defeating Sturt, Glenelg and the Eagles along the way to finally set up this historic showdown. As uh, Tim Jennifer joins us uh, uh, shortly, but we'll go now the, to the Red Legs rooms where they were bruised and battered last week. But as we saw after last week's game, they've still got a lot of fight left. Timmy, stirring, stirring emotions. They are on, a, on an emotional roll, the Red Legs, and they're very dangerous. Well, you just get the, I suppose, the finals matches under your belt. You get hardened by it, and that's what Nord are really banking on today. They've done that. They've done it three weeks in a row. Come back from the dead against Glenelg with 10 minutes to go, kicked about half a dozen goals, and they really are on a roll. So they can use that and with a lot of confidence that they are match and finals hardened going into the grand final today. The real question mark uh, sits over Port Adelaide. Two matches in the last five weeks. They've won in convincing style, and they've done pretty well, but it's still not the ideal preparation. Well, it depends which way you look at it, David. I, I for a fact, I believe that it is a good preparation. I, I just think if you can have the week off and you are fresh, and they've done that twice in a row now, I think they'll be okay. I mean, you don't really lose any fitness, I think, at this level uh, until about five or six weeks down the track, and normally you're back into pre-season then anyway. So, uh, look, uh, maybe a little bit of touch early. They might need to just find the football early. But besides that, I think the preparation won't, won't affect them at all. Well, we know who you're tipping, Tim, former Port Adelaide Premiership captain. Well, I'd be uh, linchpinned in the port if I uh, didn't pick them. So uh, I have to pick Port Adelaide. But I think anybody that tips anybody before a grand Grand final is only guessing. It's as simple as that. It really is on the day, and it's going to be a great grand final once again. Well, I guess the weather will uh, play a factor in the Red Legs uh, game today as we go down to the boundary line. And Mark Naley, Mark, uh, important for the Red Legs to get today to get off to a good start. Yes, David, very, very important. I mean, they've had plenty of injury problems over the last week since last last weekend's uh, very tough encounter. And they have been a few players under the cloud, but the conditions down here, fellas, there's hardly any clouds at all down here. It's absolutely perfect. A day for football and the crowd really is getting involved. And one of our weather persons standing here this afternoon happens to be Michael Parsons. And no doubt, Michael, these conditions will play a very important part with today's proceedings. Yes, thank you, Mark. It is a fantastic day for football. We spoke to the guys at the Weather Bureau uh, this morning, a little concerned about the conditions after the deluge that we had yesterday, but they tell me that unstable air has drifted away. We're in for a fantastic day for footy. The sun's out, there's a few clouds around, a strong southwesterly wind going to pick up in the afternoon, about 15 to 20 knots, so maybe three goals favouring that northern end of the ground. The, the ground as always, the curators here have done a fantastic job. It is just in perfect conditions. And David, I'm just looking forward to a fantastic afternoon. Good on you, Michael. I think we all are, uh, Tim, no question about that. Uh, we look back on the season, Tim, these, three, these sides have met three times. Port Adelaide have won two of them. But they have, haven't they? I saw the one in the middle at uh, Albert and Oval where Norwood really did dominate. They had to get their goals from their midfield and they did exactly that. They crumb so well, they're always front and square and they always get the, uh, the, get the goals at the end of the board. But uh, you just have a look at that round two. Well, I, I remember that. That was the yeah. Thursday night at uh, Adelaide Oval. That's right. And uh, I think those scores are upside down. But Port Adelaide actually won with Philippo kicking 10 that night. Correct. And way. they were outstanding. In the middle game, uh, Norwood played Port at Albert and I, I said Norwood really did look the goods that day. And then at Norwood Oval, Port turned it around 
round and uh, it's not too often you win at the parade and they managed to uh, clinch the Williams Gallagher Cup that day. In round 20 at uh, Norwood Oval, uh, Port Adelaide got up uh, just by the barest of margins. Uh, for Norwood, uh, Eugene Warrior kicked six goals one, uh, for Port Adelaide rather, Warrior kicked six goals one from seven kicks. He was devastating for the Red Legs. Well, I think Eugene's going to be very dangerous today as well. I think uh, really Eugene Warrior and Lenny Pascoe are the two dangers for mine. I think that if uh, Port Adelaide can curb those two, then it's going to be very hard for Nord to get goals elsewhere. So they've got to curb those two and uh, really just uh, block off the supply well uh, with that midfield. The centre line of Nord is very strong. Tim, as we go to the uh, Port Adelaide lineup, a couple of surprises. Aaron Fiora is not included and uh, neither is Trent Ormanell as we go down to the Port locker room. Well, you won't see either of those two guys uh, warming up. You're right, Trent Orman Allen and Aaron Fiora have missed out today. And there's always a tragedy in grand finals, but you've got to get, make hard decisions. That's what Stephen Williams done. And if you have a look at this side, it looks very good. Look at the back six. Carr, Lees, Carter, North East, Fig at Poulton. Big job today, but they've been in excellent form, and they've got a, uh, an excellent job to do today. But that centre line, Tregenza Brown weight against Nord centre line, which is very exciting in Tyson, Harvey and Ovs. It's going to be a real good battle. I'm looking forward to that today. Where's Port Adelaide's true strength? I, I believe centre-half forward Darryl Poole is just going to provide a lot of options for the runners to feed blokes like Binky and Evans up forward, and that's where they'll get their goals from. And probably Chalmers has to dominate the rut, which he normally does at this level, and gets those possessions and kicks long. During the week, we caught up with Port Adelaide coach Stephen Williams, who's chasing his third premiership in four years. A little bit on edge. Um, you know, there's, everything hinges on one game now. It's not a matter of, oh, well, we lose this week, we can come back again and win next week. So I think you just sort of perhaps focus on, you know, this is it. You know, they don't save anything up until the end. It's do or die. There's so many guys here that have been involved before, so they've got a fair idea what goes on. And uh, to the players' credit, you know, the, the older ones get amongst the younger ones and just sort of give them a bit of a talking to them, let them know what to expect. I think this year we're better balanced. Um, we've got, you know, two quality ruckmen, or maybe even three that can do the job there, so we're pretty well served with big men. Um, we've got good forwards and a, a good solid back line that's been together for most of the year. You know, three or four of our guys were a bit sore, had niggling little bits of injuries that if they had to come through a preliminary final, they might have, may have struggled a little bit, as uh, the talk is at Norwood, you know, there's four or five guys that are a bit sore. and. At least we've got nothing like that to worry about. We're rested, there's nobody under any sort of injury cloud, so, uh, you know, we've got no excuses. Everything's prepared now for, a, you know, for our best assault on a premiership for quite a few years. We're confident we can do it, but, um, you know, you never go into a grand final thinking, well, you know, we're going to win the game, no problems. There's always going to be, it's tough to win any grand final, even if you end up winning by a lot of goals, it's still a hell of a contest, and, uh, you know, Sundays will be definitely that. What about that banner, Tim? Yeah, well, that's what it's all about. You run through that, and uh, that's where you want to be. You want to be amongst the players, and that's where you feel the most relaxed. I was uh, talking to Chris McDermott during the week, and he played in uh, oh, seven grand finals days, and he said, you know, when, once you get around your teammates, I believe that's what he's doing today, that's when you feel most relaxed. Actually, uh, the Port boys come out. They always stick pretty close together. It seems to be uh, a trait amongst Port Adelaide sides. Oh, I think just about every club does that these days. Keep nice and close and just keep it in tight. And you see the Nord team coming out now to their banner. And uh, yeah, history repeats in 99 as the Red Legs marches one towards the Holy Grail. We so. might go down to Mark Naley. Mark, uh, the Norwood players are on the field, a good crowd uh, supporting the Red Legs. Yes, David, they're one of the, uh, the greatest sides this century, playing with against North, sorry, Nord and Port Adelaide. You know, two of the good sides this century, it's just going on you know, from strength to strength from this season. But Nord really have come from fifth position this year. Their form wasn't good leading up to the finals. But somehow they've managed to get through and they're playing it. And what's another grand final? But uh, Michael, they've had their injury problems this week. They've got a few players that have come up. Uh, Robin Nils come up and also Scotty Doreen. Tasmanian, he'll be great. Uh, he'll be very pleased to get his chance. He's going to start on the bench, I believe, with that shoulder injury. Robert Neal has come up surprisingly. We saw him go down very heavily on that ankle last week and uh, left the ground on crutches, but he's been named to play in the back pocket. And he'll be critical to this game, depending on how well he covers Eugene Warrior. Well, Michael, it we might go to the uh, Norwood lineup for you guys now. Just walk us through this red leg uh, outfit. They've been battered through the finals, but they're still here grand final day. You can see Harvey there in the middle. He's going to be critical the amount of times he gets the ball. Pitt at centre-half back on pool. Pitt is critical to the success of the Norwood Football Club. If he can get on top of Paul, he's a fantastic mark, and run off him, then uh, that will give some rebound and some drive into the forward lines that uh, the Norwood players want. But Mark Obster coming back onto the wing as well should supply the run through the midfield that they need. 
Fair enough. And uh, during the week, we also caught up with Peter Road, whose uh, red legs are chasing down the Magpies for the grand final. After the preliminary final, we uh, we went in and sung, sung the club song, and uh, everyone was joyous. And then uh, we quite quickly got them to lay down and start stretching and started talking about this week. Um, Nor would have done it from fifth place before. I think that uh, you know this year was a very even year. I mean, even though we finished fifth and Port finished first, only won two more um, minor round games than what we did. So, and for a lot of the year, we were you know on top of the ladder or above Port. On the other hand, having played all the way through the finals has its advantages as well. I mean, our guys are very match hardened and. Uh, we really don't need to worry about uh, you know, too much conditioning work or training or any of that sort of stuff. Whereas Porter, obviously, in the, in the dilemma that they need to do conditioning and competitive work and all that sort of stuff on, on the training track, and it's never quite the same as, as what you do on the ground in a game. So I think the key to Port is they've got a very even team. So it's, you know, it's a, uh, no doubt a, uh, a mistake, I think, to, to think you can cut two or three players out and you can stop their, stop their game plan. They, they certainly all, all crash in hard and they all force the ball forward and they've all got very good skills. I think we can win it with our running power. I think that you know, all the way through the finals, we've been able to work very hard in the midfield. And, and last week especially, I thought that you know for three of the four quarters we, we outworked the opposition. Um, you know I think we got some very good running players and on ball division and, and no doubt on a big round that's crucial. So we'll be keen to uh, keep the ball moving as much as possible and, and try and run them off their feet. Oh, they got to run and run and run. I mean that's why they're match hardened and that's their game. I mean Nord when they're running, just get the weight of numbers and the amount of attacks into the 50 and just creates uh, scoring opportunities. Well, you look at them, uh, O'Neill's out there, so to, uh, Robert Neill's out there, Cunningham's out there, 16. There was some doubt about Cunningham, Harvey and Neil as also Doreen, they're all there. Well, they're all there, and you, and you carry things during the week, so uh, I think that they can come up well enough to play a very good grand final. As we go down to uh, Michael Parsons with the 1999 McGarry medalist. Yes, and thank you. With me, as David has said, the 1999 McGarry medalist, Damien Squire. Damien, it's probably been a hectic time since you've won that medal, but I'm no doubt that you'd be keen to get on the ground today if possible. Oh, you're definitely right. I mean, I could give up everything just to be playing today. It's a great atmosphere and a lovely day. And uh, you moved across from North Adelaide. You got your chance. How do you think your game has developed since you moved to Sturt? Oh, I think it's developed pretty well. I mean, I think uh, on a confidence level, I've, I've boosted myself up a fair bit. And, uh, you know, and just to, just to find the ball where I played at Sturt has just been uh, more beneficial for me, so it's been good. And how do you see today's game? Well, I really, I don't, know, I don't back anyone today, but I really hope there's a bit of early 80s out of this game. And there's a bit of a bloodbath, just quietly. Damien Squire looking for a bit of biffo, but once that's over at the start, how do you see the result at the end of the game? Um, I think Port will just be a little bit too strong today. I mean, just here, though, I think they look a lot bigger than what Nord do, and I think Nord probably a little bit undermanned. But uh, like Nord, if they can get their pace going at the start, it could turn out to be a good game. Fantastic, Damien. We'll watch you toss the coin in a moment. No problem. And make sure you get it right, Damien. Dave, David Brown, of course, Tim. You've had the honour of uh, doing this. A lot of emotion flowing through the veins. Oh, certainly. When you go to toss the coin, it's. Uh you just got to take a couple of deep breaths before you get there and it's a, it is a big moment because a lot of times uh, the toss is very important. You might have a bit of a breeze that might have an influence on the game. So if you take it and you win it, then you always kick with the breeze. Let me tell you that, David. Yes, you do. Uh, Jared Cotton on screen who uh, came across from uh, Central District. And to play in finals, will he certainly achieve that? Well, he played in a couple of grand finals in 95 and 96, so he'll be following that up today. That experience is needed on a day like today. Just where you settle your nerves as we see David Brown come over to Toss the coin, umpire Kevin Chambers, Anthony Harvey, I used to like that, bloke the same height as you, it's alright, <laughs> you can look at him in the eye before you toss the coin. What did you call Tim when you... Always heads. It's landed in the mud. Harvey's won it. And it's digging to the left of screen, to the northern end of football park, so the Red Legs, I suppose, get off to a good start, a good omen. They would be very happy with winning the toss, so they'd want uh, early advantage to try and get on top of Port Adelaide. They're kicking with a breeze, and I think that uh, Nord would be very happy winning the toss, but uh, Port Adelaide can also give themselves a chance to settle down by working hard into the breeze, and by quarter time the nerves are gone and they can start to do the job. I guess there is the uh, feeling that the Red Legs need to get a quick start and just uh, get a bit of scoreboard pressure on Port Adelaide. Exactly that, and uh, they'll be looking to do that, aren't they? They are capable, they're such a strong running side and uh, very good finishers as too. That's why Doreen, I think, has probably been played underneath an injury cloud because he's such a good finisher that, uh, yeah, get guys like that who just put scoreboard pressure on by always nailing the goal. Paul Evans, uh, I guess there's a fair amount of pressure on him, along with Binky, to kick a winning score for Port Adelaide today. Well, you get out in front, you take your marks early, Paul Evans and Brian Binky, settle back, kick a goal early, it settles the whole team down. So it's a very important that they do their job, which is exactly that. Now in the Port Adelaide rooms, what's the feeling before a game? Oh, it's always on edge. I mean, most 
clubs and teams would be exactly the same. You're very, very toe in. The one thing you want to do is get the game started because it's such a long week. You know, you've got all the media commitments and there's such a build up in the papers. But all you want to do is get out there and play it. So by the time it comes, you've uh, waited a long time. Andrew Pascoe, uh, Tim, on screen. I guess he's the focal point for the Red Leagues. Absolutely. He's a very good kick for goal. Port Adelaide got to stop the flow into him. And also, uh, Nigel Figgett has to do a very good job on him because if he's given opportunities, he's a very good kick for goal. We'll pause shortly for the uh, national anthem. Pure harmony for local South Australian girls. We'll sing the national anthem today. Joy Haig, Kate Bullmiller, Naomi Crellin and Sally Cameron from the Marriottville High School and uh, continuing the SANFL policy of promoting local talent. This is a great moment. The, the players will just be called into position. It takes a while for the players to uh, do anything today, Tim. <laughs> it's interesting, there's a lot of emotion, raw emotion. Oh, this is, a, this is a big moment when you have to line up and just line up facing the opposition. Keep nice and still on the line just focus straight in. Normally like to pick out one person in the opposition, Ladies just focus on them. Girls, you all please be upstanding for the national anthem. And just try and stand strong. Welcome at pure harmony. So if we'll wait now and take a pause for Australia's national anthem, sung by pure harmony. Enjoy Kate, Naomi and Sally. Job well done, but now the work is there to be done by the players. That moment when the national anthem finishes and the roar goes up is just the ultimate in football. You just want to get on with the game. To see both teams just getting together, arms around and just making the last final pact of the commitment that you have to make on grand final day. Mark Naley rejoins us, Mark. This is a big moment. Yes, David, definitely is. We see the Lord camp there. I just walked past the doctor down there for Lord, Mr. Jeff Beryl. He just mentioned to me that those players, they're fit. The only doubt he's got is over Harvey. Possibly his hamstring may trouble him this afternoon. But the other boys, Newell has come up beautifully, and so has Doreen from his shoulder. John Cunningham, the 97 Jack Odie medalist, has recovered from a hamstring. David Brown for Port Adelaide needed to overcome an ankle. And Brian Binky, a foot injury. And Brett Chalmers, the 98 Jack Odie medalist, a calf injury. So. With Darryl Poole retiring, uh, Tim, there could be some fireworks in his final game. Oh, look, Darryl's just hard at it, regardless of whether he's retiring today or not. He's just very, very hard at the ball, and if somebody's got the ball, then he's out of them. So I think he'll be OK. We look at Harvey on screen as well. He's got an injury cloud over him, but he'll go all right. Binky and Poole together. Very important up front, they are. Very important. They've got to take catches and finish off. Darryl's got to feed out to the other runners. Just focusing in. Forwards get together, midfield gets together, defence gets together on both sides as they make their way to their positions. Magnolia said uh, Harvey had a hamstring injury, I think along with back and shoulder injuries as well. So we're about to start the 1999 SANFL Grand Final. Colin Rouston and his first Grand Final gets to bounce the ball. Your commentator is Mark Naley. Yes, umpire just waits now. Players that find their position, pick up. As the siren starts, the 1999 SA NFL Grand Final. Umpire thumps the ball into the centre circle. Up goes Yerbury. Over the top was Chalmers with the first touch of the afternoon. Dumping wide there was Bassett. Going back, Harvest Lees. First chance for the Red Lakes to go forward through Obst. It's a high ball. Carter leaves the race towards the boundary line. Kemet Hart was northeast, playing in his eighth Grand Final. Timmy Ginova 
what a tremendous effort. One of the most experienced players playing out there this afternoon. He's got it on his side, hasn't he, experience? And uh, with seven premierships from eight uh, outings, that's a fair effort too. Yerbury again, Chalmers over the top, comes down, Nord go forward again. Favoured by a slight breeze in his first quarter. Cotton going back with the flight of the football, takes a good mark. It's exactly the start that uh, Norwood would have liked. He got the ball out of the centre square through Obst. And they're just getting the hands on the ball early because they are finals hard, and that's a good grab by Cotton. Oh, they should see the goal square. There's Brian Lee's this afternoon picking up Lachlan Bowman as we watch Cotton comes in. Left foot hasn't made the distance over the top there with a big thump forward. Goes Chalmers. The first score goes to the Red Legs. In the end, that uh, ball didn't really come off the boot all that well of Jared Cotton's, and plenty of opportunity for Brett Chalmers to spoil it through. Carr from fullback picks out Fraser. We had just such a wonderful game in the second semi final. Seems to be in uh, very good form after the heartbreak of the knee reconstruction last year. Back it goes to Carr in a set play. It was good work to pull, who's out bustled fit. Now that's going to be pivotal, Tim. You'd suggest in the matchups today. Well, that was a bit easy, wasn't it? I don't think Pitt will allow that. Pull goes forward. Well done. A lock on it's marked in front of Clements. Well, that's the sort of opening that Port Adelaide would have wanted. Strong and tough. Binky took front position, brings the ball to ground. Pitt just slicks it out. Tyson, the ball was smothered beautifully. And here comes Fleming. As we go down to Michael Parsons and the Norwood bench. Yes, and you can see the three players there waiting to get on. Crouch, Doreen with his injured shoulder, just waiting his chance to try it out. And Big Downsbury is going to be critical should Chalmers start to get a bit of the ball for Port. Just outside, 50 for the Magpies. Darrell Poole head down once again, fighting with Obst for the football. Oh, it's uh, Jared Crouch on the bench. I would have... Uh, Gee, his game last week was terrific, yeah, Tim, wasn't I it? I personally would have uh, started him. He's such a good ball getter, so... A tough customer to boot. Poole again. Herbert gets the handball down. A chance for the Red Legs to go forward. It's kicked up. Umpire is, hasn't blown the whistle, so there's a chance here for Fiegert now to clear for the Magpies. Comes across. Good work from behind. Good pressure from Bassett. Sees the ball out over the line. Interesting matchups, boys. Uh, Fiegert's picked up Bassett, and Northeast has got Pasco. Just to uh, worry about that matchup in terms of height. Bowman, Bustle. Off the ball, ricochets forward, Kemp into space. Lees, who patrols and covers plenty of territory and loves the big occasion, turns it around the corner, two on one in the contest, it falls to the back door. Kemp quickly on, Bassett handballs it away, Poulton needs support, gets it from Waite, quick hands in turn, but look at the pressure out there. Harvey came in on McGuinness and forced the ball across the line. Good early pressure both sides, uh, not allowing any little handballs to get away. What you'd expect in the opener of a grand final. Throw in, Chalmers comes through, takes it out of the air. The ball wasn't good. The boys were back a fair way. Chalmers bad, but a little speedster takes on Davey. Gets the kick away to Binky. Binky takes the ball. Good tackle from behind. The Red Legs defence are good so far in this game. Paul, also taken by Pitt, gets up. Just shows a bit of strength. And the free kick's been found here. And Davey's hurt. Davey's oh, hurt his knee. That? Kemp. Plays the advantage, he's pushed as he kicks it. Heads towards the centre of the ground. Cunningham also pushed from behind. Coming through is Bowman. Tough little customer, looks for support. Players were running past. Pong's taken high there by Bowman. The umpire's seen this and pays the free kick. Start, just start the warm up, isn't that, boys? Well, as we'd expect, a Lachlan running free at half forward. On the left, spears it in. Front position, oh, beautifully done, Fleming. Now, that's not a bad matchup either, is it, uh, Evans and Fleming? Excellent matchup. Fle uh, Fleming's got excellent. Uh, pace over five metres and uh, very good hands as he showed there. 16 games for Fitzroy and a state player, Yerbury. Well, won't they rely on him to nullify the effect of Chalmers today? Releases Paul Cormack. So McCormick goes towards centre half forward. Pasco was the target. The ball's brought to ground. Harvey was bustled out of the contest. Bassett overran it. Good work, Eugene Warrior, but Carr is fighting hard for the ball. He's a dogged uh, defender, no doubt about that. Heads it towards the boundary line. We've played just on five minutes into the first quarter of the grand final as we go down to Michael Parsons. Yes, and the port bench, Clayton, Morgan, and again a Ruckman sitting on the bench in big Damien Brown. 
45 out for the Red Legs. Kemp who's had an outstanding final series. Ball's kicked out by Brown over the top, looking for the running Dragenza. Again, good work from behind. Mark, excuse me, uh, Arif Yura left out and Trent Orman Allen left out, Tim. A bit of a surprise. Oh, in the end, they had to make some pretty tough decisions and I think, you know, whoever you left out was going to be stiff. Daryl Paul this time with Yerbury. Good touch, two taps there by Yerbury. Hits the ground, coming through was James. Paul there, second effort was good. Throws the ball over the top. Ball's still alive, good umpiring here. McGuinness just throws it onto the boot. It's a high ball at the back is off. in front. McCormack takes a safe mark. Cross to Davey. Davey gets the ball moving forward. Coming across, it should be taken here. Will be. Just knocked forward by Tyson. Couldn't be taken. Lees is very good in defence. Just playing in front of uh, Lachlan Bowman at the moment, Tim. In a couple of contests yeah. we've seen, Lees has been the has, has had the better of the duel. Well, Miles, I reckon both defences are actually playing in front of the moment. Nord's got the uh, advantage up the end. You see Hockey Bowman just trying to uh, take Leesy's head off there. That's fair enough. Because it's an ugly head. <laughs> Bolton on the fly from Lees. Good mark, Fraser. Plays pretty tall, this Ruck Rover. He's 70 metres out, too far out to score. The lead was on. It squares up into the corridor. Port Adelaide are very disciplined. Brown needs oh, support, gets it from McGuinness. It was a good handball. James applies the tackle, loose ball falls, it's a 50-50 contest now, McCormick crashes through, Obst applied the tackle, now it's Damien Obst to James, James running through the corridor as well, there's some great disciplines in the opening minutes of this match, Warrior missed it, but look at Carr, high rating That's early, oh, and bang, down goes one in the midfield and a warning, it was James, thanks Nails, Evans, handballs it inside the line, two on one contest, Fleming and Pitt, and well, that's a great contest. It's a great opening, isn't it? Everybody's just hard at the football and there's no quarter given. It's been brilliant so far. Carr's effort on Warrior in a couple of contests has been excellent. And you just see Fleming desperate in defence there to get the ball over the line. Paul takes it out of the air again, looks for support. Binky's there, just needs to pick the football up. Good work by Neil. Coming in hard there was Tyson from behind. He's sat upon by Waite. And the umpire blows the whistle once again. It's 45 out for the Magpies. Just one of those areas Malcolm Blight's been critical of Binky is at ground level, and you just saw Binky not taking the half volley then. Over the top, Pitt. Heads for the safety of the boundary line. He finds it. Very good crowd at Football Park enjoying this one. I think the last time these two sides met in a grand final was 1997. Norwood won that one in front of 44,000 people. You'd have to... Expect there's almost that many here again today. Obst, the 35-year-old. Some question mark, Tim, over whether he'll retire, but I think he can go on. He's had an excellent year, Dave. It really has, and his final series has been brilliant. He'll probably be, you know, giving a good performance today. Best player in the finals for Port Adelaide, so the old fella's still got it in him. 32 possessions against the Eagles, and uh, see any talk of retirement, Tim, I think a few mates will be trying to talk him out, but Bamford on the left, recovered his own handball. Neil, let's test his fitness. Well, he did that pretty well. Again in front, which is excellent. And the Lord defence and Port Adelaide defence have both been in front, which you have to be, but I'd be uh, a little bit upset with Port Adelaide's forwards. They need to make a contest one-on-one -on -one there. Nine minutes gone. Lord still have that solitary behind on the scoreboard. The Magpies yet to score. With 35 metres out. The ball will be thrown in. Contesting this ruck duel will be Yerby for the Red Legs. Big dashing Daryl Paul. He's announced a retirement, just uses his hands well there, just pushed Yerby forward. Brown has opportunity here. Quick kick up forward. Binky playing in front. Maybe held without the football. Good work from behind by Fleming. Pitt fumbles it. O'Loughlin's there to clean it up. Goes to ground. Again, we see Pitt. Quick hands in tight across to Clements. He goes up five. Again, leaves a great duel there with Bowman. Comes out on top. Ops. Backs himself. Magpies have numbers around the football. Draganza unleashes a little short pass forward over the backs. Neil with him is Binky. Which way will he go now? He comes back. He needs support from Pitt. Evans comes over the top of both players. And again, the umpire comes in. Healthy atmosphere out there on the outside of the fence, but Jewel, the pace is on early. Been excellent again, isn't it? Uh, you just can't get an easy kick away and. Uh... Saw Ops there trying to break through a tackle, didn't get through. Paul's just dominating these ruck contests up forward for Port Adelaide at the moment. That is a worry. 
gets hand to that, but the umpire said there was a push and oh. Paul wins it. Mark? <laughs> yeah, I'll leave it up to Tim, I think. It just looked from up here. I reckon Yerbury's hands accidentally come down on the pool's shoulder, but it's just one of those things you play on, I reckon. Let's have a look. Hey. Nothing in it. No. Hey. Yeah. There's nothing there. Yerbury's going for the football. It's dead set a wrong decision, that one. It's like the one earlier down here where I just don't know where, what they well, I guess out. like uh, players, commentators, umpires, they've all got nerves. Nerves, I agree. And we make it out to Michael Parsons. Seems a player's coming off down there, Michael. Yes, uh, young Fraser coming off, got blood coming down the side of his face, a little cut above the eye. He's been picking up Anthony Harvey and wearing him like a glove. It'll be interesting to see if Morgan, who's coming on, takes that role as well. But one of the other matchups that's going to be critical as the game unfolds is Banford and Cunningham. They are standing very close to each other and both very critical to getting the ball from the in and under situations. Good pick up, Michael. So Poole will kick for goal from 25 metres out on a very tight angle, kicking into the teeth of the breeze. He'll need to swing it out to the right and bring it back against the breeze. It's not an easy kick. David, don't ask for anything fun, <laughs> fancy from Daryl here. Just let him kick it. Just straight at it and drill it. Well, he doesn't kick a lot of goals, does he, Pooley? I think uh, he's played 24 games. Oh, good kick. For oh, that's a great kick. Well, oh, he's there you go. That's a grand final kick. That's the one you want. Well, that's a great start. He's dominated those ruck duels got a free kick from where we're not sure we we'll look at it again there's nothing there maybe Yerbury could have got one that's charity goal that one but in the end you have to kick him take your opportunities and that's exactly what Daryl Poole just did well, that's a great goal of the Magpies and they just go down to Michael Parsons once again that breeze favoring the red legs Michael how many goals do you reckon yeah, it's probably worth a couple of goals, but Daryl Paul was a bit lucky there. He was kicking right into it, so it didn't really affect the direction of the ball. But I think this rucking contest that you're talking about is going to be critical. With Paul up forward and Chalmers, if he can get oh, his well hands done. on the ball, it's going to be very good for the Magpies. Comes down again to Bamford. Bamford goes towards Binky. He's playing in front this time. Takes a good safe mark. Under a fair bit of pressure there from behind by Robert Neal. Julian Waite smashing in on the wing here, head over the football. That was a lot of courage. And people talk about toughness in grand finals. That is toughness. Get your head over the football and just win the footy. Evans is clear. Fleming lets him go. Binky outside 50, thumps the ball inside. It's the top of the square. Lachlan has to sit. Couldn't take the mark. Head down oh, again. It was Ops. Tregenza just take the football from somewhere. Ops just lifted his eyes, I think, Tim, just momentarily. They gave Tregenza just enough space to bring up his first goal and the Magpies second. What a steal by Tregenza. we just see it again on tape. Ricky O'Loughlin made the contest, which he had to. Ops there, didn't take the ball forward. Tregenza stole it and what a beautiful kick. you just got to slap them on your boot quickly and hope that they go straight and that's what Simon Tregenza did. You take your opportunities as Port Adelaide did. They lead by 11 points. Just on 13 and a half, almost 14 minutes into the first term. Cotton around the corner, Warrior traps it. One step, sells the dummy beautifully, straightens up with the breeze and he's back. That's the answer Norwood wanted. Well done, Eugene Warrior. First on the board for him and for the Redlegs. 14 minutes into the first term. Well, what an answer it was. Tommy Carr's done a pretty good job on him so far in the contest, but Eugene just trapped this beautifully and turned Tommy inside out. Jared Cotton doing the very good work in the centre clearance. Look at the way he trapped the ball, then turns Tommy inside out, off one step. It's not an easy kick. First goal to Eugene Warrior, the first one to the Red Legs. We're 14 and a half minutes into the grand final for 1999. Yerbury again with Chalmers. Chalmers' second effort's been outstanding. Morgan has crashed into, coming through hard there was Cotton. Bowman this time plays in front of Lees, gives it across to Hobbs. He's backed himself with a run in the legs. Kicks it up. Where's Warrior? Takes one grab, nearly the second. Over the top there is James. Snaps over his left shoulder. It's out of bounds. And you see the breeze there, just with the streamers. And also with the uh, ripped up, uh, it's like telephone books, but they wouldn't be, would they, David? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe last year's editions. Probably. Ball comes back into play. James steals it away, gets through Carter. Off it goes to Pascoe on the left foot, wide of the mark. In fact, this one might even uh, just make a point. Well, I guess the tide is turning, though, Tim. That's what Norwood want. They just wanted to get some scoreboard runs. 
Well, they've made a couple of thrusts into the 50 and they've been very productive with them. So, look, the Warrior and Pasco are still very dangerous. Carr to bring the ball back in. A heavily strapped right hamstring. Or five. The kick's not good. Wait comes across. Maybe could have given away 25 metres. He hasn't. A chance here for Scotty Bassett. The breeze behind him will kick from around about 52, 53 metres. Scotty Bassett, very good player, straight line player. Real advantage if you can have him up forward because of his discipline and his courage. And he's a reasonable kick too. Yeah, we're right behind this one, Timmy, and he'll wave him at that right-hand goalpost and let the wind do the work and drift it into the middle. So Scotty Bassett, one, two, three, four steps, then unleashes with the big kick, he pushes it wide. Just a bit too wide, I believe. It's out of bounds on the full, so not a good kick there. On a number 31 for the Red Leagues. Maybe that's why he plays in defence a lot. <laughs> this fellow plays in defence a real lot. Paul Northeast, specialist, hardened defender. Kicks wide, Tregenza, manhandled, Brown off the ground, goes forward, just a little bit of space. Harvey recovers the ball, drives a high one towards full forward. Pasco and Northeast, let's see how the mismatch works. Well, Northeast took front position and crashed it across the line. It was inspiring. Well, he uh, will do an excellent job. If you remember 98 grand final, he picked up White. Now, White, a very tall forward like Pasco, he did the same thing, just worried him out of the contest. Yerbury tried to crash through. Bassett off the ground. What's he done? Oh, they like it. The Red League plays it through. Oh so Bassett, the defender, Timmy, gets one and an important one. Well, he's made up for his earlier shot at goal, but Scotty Bassett, just 100 mile an hour, attack that football. We've got a foot to a very vital contest. You just have a look at this. You've got to be desperate. Yerbury did the right thing. Came across the pack. It was a good play because Bowman looked like he was taking the tap. Look at Bassett's effort there. You see that Monday night's SBS when they play the soccer. That was brilliant. The only soccer to watch. <laughs> Two-point margin now. The Red Legs. A tap again down by Chalmers. Nord had the numbers. Cotton over the top of the football. Big clash of bodies were in there. Tyson head over the football. There's a Nord player down behind. A little Rover and Cunningham. Just felt the effects of that attack on the football. Four players, just eyes for the football only. Great courage and great commitment. It's down. Again over the top. Doesn't look like Obst. Yerbridge in there again. Coming up with it was Carter. Will be taken by James. James gets the kick away. Oh, some courage out there at the moment. Some great stuff. Charles McGuinness, right leg up forward. Evans in front. At the back is Fleming. Thumbs the ball towards the boundary line. Great effort there by Fleming from behind. It's very good defend defender, Fleming. You won't get an easy touch on him. You've just got to get the ball out in front a little bit. But uh, the pressure that's on at the moment in both midfields. The kicks that are coming in are fairly well under pressure. There's only two teams who have occupied top spots throughout the year. And they're playing here today. Port Adelaide have held it for all year, bar round 16 and 17. Morgan gets the handball away. McGinnis forward, Binky front position. Neil spoils that one. Obst at ground level, needs to work hard. Comes back in board, cop one. Play on set, the umpire Binky turns it around the corner, but under pressure. This one's out of bounds on the full. This is a tough opening, too. This is as tough a grand final opening as we've seen. It's been excellent. There's not a lot of room to move down there, and you've just got to uh, make the most of opportunities like Scotty Bassett did earlier. Fleming, who uh, came back to South Australia this year, catch up with his girlfriend Megan. Gee, I think there's a few Red League fans who will be glad she's here. And Chalmers recovering from the calf injury, but he looks pretty sound today. Brown and ankle, no worry on that one. But this kicks out of bounds on the full, so. Port Adelaide didn't have had their chances, but they're spraying the ball wide. Yeah, he's in two minds then, I think, Brownie, whether to uh, pinpoint I Lachlan or go for goal, so a bit of confusion. Davey from half-back finds Cunningham. He's taken by Darrell Paul. The umpire comes in quickly. What will he say here? Leave the little fella alone. Paul again puts down Cunningham. He kicks it. A good mark there, taken by Harvey. Harvey unleashes the kick towards Pasco. The big fella comes out. Lenny Pasco. Showed a yard of pace there in front of Paul Northeast. Well, again, Norwood. Harvey, beautiful kick. Great execution to Pascoe. Gave Northeast no chance to defend that. Well, Harvey just been freed up. 
We saw Fraser came off. Morgan has, hasn't picked Harvey up. He's had a couple of good possessions in the last five minutes of football. Pasco. We're with him. The concentration on his face. He looks down at the football, looks up towards the goal square. Back down to the football. Now re releases the kick. And it's true. It's another major to the Red Leagues. They're 3 2, 20. They've got an eight point margin over the Magpies on two goals. See Cunningham, no mucking around when he got the uh, free kick. Quickly played on. Got his left foot towards Harvey. And Harvey, just a great kick out on the lead here to Pasco. Pasco really had to work for it. But it uh, doesn't give defenders too much chance when it's delivered like that. Six goals last week. Looming is the danger man for Port Adelaide. Uberry wins this one. Bamford misses it, but Brown flicks it out. And Lachlan, slick work to Bamford. A high ball and into space it goes. Good contest underneath this one. Hobbs caught under it. McGuinness thrown away. Bamford again. Gee, the tackling is fierce. Bamford around the corner and Evans, 55 metres out. Well, he's a powerful kick. And his best would make the distance. No. I'll have to play on, I think. <laughs> well, he's done that, Chalmers. Now, he has kicked one from here before in a grand final. But not on a uh, standing start. He likes a run. And loves oh. it right this way. Look at the kick. Oh. Look at the kick. Obst has got it in the pocket. What do you reckon, Tim? I reckon the ball ended up going end on end. And I don't really believe that uh, that was a pass, but Brett Chalmers might be claiming it. No, I think you've called it pretty well. I know Andrew Obst is claiming it. Well, he was playing in front in the forward line. That's all you can do. So this is Obst. From point blank range at a tight angle, the breeze going from right to left. Well, he needed to take the right post to make the kick work. But the kick was probably a little too good. It was a little too good. You're exactly right. It was uh, punched in like it should have been. But it was just too accurate. Well, Fleming will take the kick in for the Red Legs. Seven point margin favouring the boys in blue. That comes out wide. The good lead out here by Davey. Also with him is Harvey. Morgan's there as well. The Magpies have the number. Good work there by Davey at ground level. Coming in hard was Ops over the top with Morgan. Again, the contest, it's fierce. A bit of desperation from both sides so far in this game. It is a grand final. 23 minutes. First quarter, Yerbury. Too tall over the top there for Paul. Harvey gives it across to Roger James. James down the wing. Going back to safe mark with Jared Paulton. Yeah, Port Adelaide just got to move the ball on a bit quicker, and they've done it from defence well here. Just sometimes up forward, they've held on to it. Northeast is out wide if he wishes to use him. The figure just comes on board. The kick's not good. Oh, going back bad there was Pitt. Should have got to that contest. Here he is. He's over the top of it. Coming back again is Pitt. Works hard, but that was McCormack. Again, the ball's still alive. Great umpiring. Just giving these players an opportunity to get the ball out. Oh, Nils, just a little bit of a push there. And Brown has a bit of a talking to from the umpire at 25 metres. So the penalty now against the Magpies will favour the Red Leagues. So Neil, we saw him go down last week with that ankle. Definitely did stretch the ligaments. Oh, maybe not a great deal in that, but just enough to upset him. So Robert Neil, a booming kick inside 50. Pasco goes with it. At the back is Carter. Carter will be taken by Worry. He goes for the safety of the line and finds it. So the Red Legs, we saw the Magpies kick the opening two goals, they've come back. One from Bassett and also one from Warrior. Bowman contesting with Chalmers. Just came underneath that football. Seven points the margin. Almost 25 minutes into the first term. I don't know that too many people expected this. There were some that thought that Port Adelaide would win by 10 goals, and the Red Legs have kept themselves right in the hunt, even though they're enjoying the breeze in the first quarter. But they've absorbed what Port Adelaide have thrown at them, and they're ahead by seven points early in this match. Bowman, Chalmers from behind, spoils and forces the ball towards the boundary line. 
I guess Tim uh, Port Adelaide just reset at uh, quarter time and use the breeze if they can in the second turn. Well, Lord have done exactly what they had to do and they've done it particularly well, just getting quick kicks and clearances and they really should be proud of themselves at the moment. And Port Adelaide, I agree, will have to reset at quarter time and then use this breeze properly. I don't know that you could be unhappy with uh, either side of this stage, perhaps other than Commitment's the Port Adelaide. Been fantastic. Yep. No, I agree with what you're saying there. Both coaches would be happy with the commitment at the football, so it's just a matter of who can persist and endure. Yeah, Brie. Thumps it down. McGuinness off the ground. Goes forward into space. Brown just missed it. Uh, pressure from McCormick. Morgan comes in. Cunningham 16 for the Red Leagues. But umpire Rouston will bounce. Ooh, it's a tough contest out there. I'm glad we're up here. It's been a fantastic SANFL final series. We are looking forward to this afternoon's contest. Yerbury, quick hands in board towards Harvey. Well done there by McGuinness. He's tackled again by McCormack. Great work again from the defence of the Red Leagues. Especially Paul McCormack. Every 50-50 contest has been well fought by both clubs, and that's what I've uh, really enjoyed the opening quarter here at the moment. There's not much in it. Harvey tackled. Morgan. James is thrown away from that contest. Davey takes a good mark. He's got support there from Cunningham. Decides to go alone. The kick's going back to Poulton. Great courage by Poulton. Coming out with Pasco. Takes it. Knocks it forward to Kemp. Kemp gives it back to Bowman. Bowman off one step. Kicks it high up forward. Back there is Bassett with Fiegert. The use of the body there by Fiegert was enough just to push Bassett under that contest. We see Coach Williams coming out down to the race. To spend the last couple of minutes in the coach's box. And coach Trevray, uh, Tim, who lost a couple when he was in charge mid-year. Oh, there's another soccer goal to the Red Legs. And it's Kim. So the Red Legs edge further ahead just before the quarter time siren. They're 4-2, Port Adelaide at 2-1. Well, Norwood would be wrapped in that goal. Kemp again, uh, boundary throwing. They've done very well up forward. I just think their uh, ruck work up there has been excellent, as Paul has done in Port Adelaide's forward line, but Kent just grabbed it off the contest and quickly dribbled it through on his left foot. An excellent goal, and one late in the quarter, they really would be happy with that little bit of a buffer as they go into quarter time. Well, we haven't spoken about it yet, fellas. The Magpies have only played three games in six weeks, Tim. Is the preparation good enough for a grand final? I think the first quarter was always going to be their settling down period. It's fought again for the Red Legs. Spoiling there was was Harvey. Great tackle on Fiegert from Kemp. Carter's down. Nord again surge forward through Obbs. There's a bit of a blue on behind as well. A couple of Nord players. The umpire has blown his whistle. Big Paul comes in. Throws his weight around. 25 it's Clements. Binky's there as well though. It's Bamford. On the ground. We're back with the field. The umpire's called play on. It goes over the top of, of Bowman's head. He goes down. He's taken high. Gets his boot to ball. Back there is Carr. Good work from the Magpies from defence. Carr to space. See, there's some emotion in the middle of the ground. Brown over the top, weight. Cotton stopped him getting his tackle. Oh, it's got claimed by Neil. It was a great tackle. Loose ball falls. Cotton to Tyson around the corner. Big fly, James, but a better fly was Carr. He's pretty good overhead, Tim, this young fella. That's an excellent mark. Tommy Carr has worked particularly hard in defence in this first quarter. Cummins boy, and they've recruited pretty well from there. We have Danny Hughes, Greg Phillips, Simon Pedler. Certainly the West Coast, a very productive area for Port Adelaide. But they're not doing exactly what they had to do. I'd like to know what they put in the water over there because they just produced some great players. Vinky had front position and missed it. Brown went for a kick off the ground. See, the commitment is just fantastic. Look, it's, uh, it's hard to make comparisons, but you compare, say, the AFL game just a week or so ago and the opening of this, the intensity well, is better. I believe the gap in AFL physical contact and the between them and the SNFL will get bigger and bigger as the years go on. The SNFL is still allowed to see these body clashes and it's just fantastic. Well, Morgan's been given the message. He has to pick up Harvey. It's come from Coach Williams. He's doing that now. Yerbury over the top again, gets his hands to the football. Cotton's tackled well. Poole just puts his big right knee into the back there of Cotton. Made sure that little number nine in the red legs jumper didn't get up. Macca, what a champion he was for the club. Showing a little bit of grey there, David, and his beard, and also 
by his temples. Yes, I don't do great jokes, uh, <laughs> Mark, as you know. They do a good exchange of hands there by the Magpies. Ends up with Bamford. Going back with Neil Binky takes it. It'll be taken high by Pitt. The umpire is given the free kick here. It'll go towards Pitt. Well, the question is here is whether he ducked into it, uh, Tim, isn't it? As the siren sounds, well, what an interesting quarter it was. And it was certainly Norwood who took the game right up to Port Adelaide. It's 4-2-21, and at quarter time, the margin is 13 points in favour of the Red Leagues, Tim. I don't know if there's too many people who would have anticipated this. Well, I think Norwood, and in their own camp, would have believed that if they could get this early start, kick with the breeze, they won the toss, which was important, and to get this early start and the run that they did was exactly what they would have wanted to do. So, look, I, I don't think it's a surprise at all, especially from their camp. They would have been thinking exactly that. But Port Adelaide were always going to take a while to settle down. So their first quarter, 13 points down. They now kick with the breeze. They regroup, and they have to use the breeze as well as Norwood did. So at quarter time in the 1999 SANFL Grand Final, Port Adelaide to 2-1, Norwood to four goals to. You're watching the SANFL Grand Final, exclusive to ABC TV Sport. Thirteen points of margin, Tim. I don't think you'd be liking this too much. Oh, look, it's been a great first quarter. I've really enjoyed it. We talked about the physical presence and I suppose the inability for players to get kicks away because of the pressure, and it's been excellent. I've, I've really enjoyed it, and I think it's a great start of the game. Nord have done exactly what they would have wanted to do. And I just believe now, quarter time, just see how Port Adelaide settled down. They have, uh, like you said, played only uh, three games in six weeks, but that, uh, to me, all it takes is a quarter to settle down. So it'll be interesting to see what the half-time score is between these two sides. I thought it was ominous uh, when Tregenza stripped that ball from uh, Norwood's Damien Obst and ran in and gold. Port Adelaide, at that stage, were doing all the attacking and looking like they were going to mount a score. Ricky O'Loughlin just made a contest here, and Norwood's defence has been pretty good. You see Obst took his ball, eyes off the ball there and allowed Tregenza to steal it. And he threw it on his boot, and uh, that's all you can hope for is that they go straight. Talk about Obst in uh, grand finals. His pace has been uh, blinding, really, and so too is Tregenza's. Well, that's his strength, though, Obst, and uh, he gets out, and they feed the ball out there, and he just carries it over the lines, and he does it particularly well, and he just gives them forward thrusts all the time, and that's been the beauty of their centre line and their midfield players. And they did it in that quarter. They were particularly good. We talked about uh, Pasco and uh, his requirement to kick a big score for Norwood yeah. to win, but uh, we didn't probably factor in Eugene Warrior and the contribution he could make today. Yeah, well, I called before the game that I believe that Pasco and Warrior have to be stopped. Cotton, beautiful centre clearance here. You just see Warrior here, trapped it well, turned Tom Carr inside out and had one step. Carr had done some excellent things on him early, but that contest was all Eugene Warrior. When you think about Eugene Warrior last year playing at Williston in country football, 100 kilos, uh, porky by anyone's standards. Today he's playing at 84, 85 kilos. He looks very fit, very sharp. He's certainly stripped it off and he's looking very fit. And you're right, gives himself another opportunity to play good football and he's done that today. What, what about Scotty Bassett? Scotty Bassett, well, an opportunity here and you've got to make the most of them. See Bowman just making the contest, allowing Newbury to come in and Bassett off the deck. Well, that's as good a soccer goal as you see. Now we talked about uh, Anthony Harvey. Uh, two players have had a tagging roll on, on him in the first quarter. If Fraser had to come off, which was uh, probably uh, sad for Port Adelaide's sake, but he got a bit of a cut on the eye whether he comes back on or not. But he was doing the job on Harvey and doing it pretty well. Uh, came off and that just allowed Harvey a little bit of room and uh, he created an op opportunity here. I thought this kick to Pasco was as good as you'll see because Pasco didn't even break stride. Well, good skill level and good delivery is important in grand finals and Anthony Harvey's one of the best of it. Now Pasco uh, kicked seven last mine around of the year against South Adelaide, then two, two and six. So he is a guy who uh, really has, along with Bowman going to centre forward, has revamped the entire Norwood forward line. Yes, yeah, so I think he's in very important. I, I said earlier, him and Warrior are the ones that have got to kick the goals for Nord, and he's already started the game well. So it's going to be a good contest between him and North East. North East won't give him too much room. A lot of people say uh, Norwood got two soccer goals that were lucky. Kemp got one, I thought was just uh, a good, good bit of skill. Oh, it's a good Rovers goal here. Just straight off the pack, get it onto your boot quickly and uh, rolled it through. That's an excellent goal, and Kemp continues his good form in the final series. As we go down to Michael, he's right in the midst of the huddle. Yes, and Port Adelaide coach Stephen Williams, a bit concerned that uh, Norwood got two goals from set players on throw-ins uh, in their forward line, so they'll work on that, stand right next to their men, 
Morgan will take Harvey again in this quarter and really looking for Michael Lachlan to get involved in the game. And just generally, a bit more fair dinkum, boys. This is a grand final. So that's where Stephen Williams saw it. Norwood, however, the first guy that spoke to me was the Norwood doctor. He said, we've got no injuries. First time for about four weeks. He's pretty pleased with that. And that's significant as well because of the players that went in under a cloud for Norwood. Yerbury, they're pretty pleased with getting his hand of the ball around the ground. Although I think Daryl Poole's giving him a bit of a hard time when they get in those body-to-body -body situations. Hold the ball in the area and be aware of Port Adelaide moving the ball sideways and running it out from the half-back line. All in all, I think Norwood are pretty pleased with what went on in that first quarter. Thanks very much, uh, Michael. Uh, the 1987 Jack Odie medalist, Michael Parsons, you just see his intensity lifting. <laughs> I think he's flashing back. He's getting flashbacks on the boundary, but uh, Norwood would be very pleased with that. And I'll tell you what, Robert Neal's performance in the first yep. quarter, under an injured cloud with that ankle, he's come up very well. A quarter time uh, here in the 99 grand final. Port Adelaide at 2-1, Norwood at four goals too. Tim, if we look at the uh, goal scorers, you'd expect more perhaps from Port Adelaide just at this stage? Oh, going into the breeze and the point that we made that they had to settle down, I think that uh, two or three goals out of them would have been fairly pleasing. So it's just a matter of, of now, You've done that, you've settled down, now you've got to perform in the second term. So it'll be interesting, Nord, all excellent opportunities for goal there and not wasted by any of those players. Mark Naley's been having a good uh, look at the statistics, but uh, not much in the inside 50 uh, stat. Both sides attacking pretty solidly. Yes, Dave, we just see there with the kicks in the handball, well, there's eight difference there, just favouring the Magpies. 69 plays, 61. The marks were pretty even, 13 and 12. Free kicks were three and two. The umpiring has been very good in that first quarter. Hit outs, well, that's a big difference with 13 as compared to eight. We might get into Michael Parsons. Yes, yeah, thanks, Mark. With me, one of the assistant coaches and past champions of Norwood, Michael Ash. Michael, the analysis of the first quarter? Well, Parsons, it's always going to be tough and tight and early, and the first eight to ten minutes certainly proved that. Uh, yeah, the wind, well, it certainly was going our way. It's probably maybe a one or two goal um, breeze and advantage, but... You know, the guys hung in there when the, the Port kicked the first two, so, you know, we've uh, capitalised, kicked the next four. But as you know, against Port Adelaide, you just got to do every contest you can, and if you come out on top, hopefully you come out in front of the end. All right, Michael, we'll stick around and see what happens. Thanks. Thanks, Aishi. Thanks, uh, Michael. As the Port Adelaide huddle uh, reconvenes, there's Wayne Jackson, along with John Halbert. Uh, Wayne, of course, the chief of the AFL, who was here for... The SANFL Grand Final Luncheon, great supporter of South Australian football and an Eagle fan too, but I don't know that, uh, Mark, you'll worry whether Port Adelaide or Norwood win this one. No, I still think that um, he's there, he's here, he's promoting football, he's promoting AFL football along with the SANFL. He's a good South Australian supporter and a good man to boot. We just see Coach Williams just taking his time to get off this ground. He's both coaches, Tim, spent a lot of time with their players, but it's good to see that Norwood signed... Uh, with Michael Lace and Gary McIntosh very quick to get onto the ground and get their players together. They know the importance of this quarter, I think, Mark Marley. They must get another solid start to this. As we see Brooke, Stephen's brother Mark in the crowd, but they know they've got to get another solid start and be at least level, if not in front at half-time. The start of the second quarter here, the 1999 SANFL Grand Final. A 13-point margin favours the Red Legs. A big thump from Chalmers, heads towards Dragenza. Quicker lee onto the boot goes Simon Dragenza up towards Binky. Good work by Neil in front. He'll back himself here. He needs to give the handball. He does, and he goes for the kick up forward. Working hard across the back there. Well done by Bowman. He presented himself and gave the contest. And just held up proceedings there for it. Robert Neil's just attacking the ball with... As if his life's on the end of it, he's just really been desperate. Perhaps not played the Premiership before. Absolutely desperate to get one. Again, Chalmers dumps it forward, running over the top of the ball there was Kemp. Brown very quickly balled the boot. I think it was in mid-air. That was clever. That. Very clever. And again, Paul in front of Pitt. Daryl Paul outside his distance, but he gets it right to the top of the square. It's a great kick by Daryl Paul. A thump by McCormack. A thumped again there by... Harvey over the line. As we see the Port Adelaide bench, we may get into Michael just with an update. Yes, you can see them here. Not too many changes at quarter time. Matter of fact, none at all. Clayton, Fraser and Brown will sit down and there's also an unconfirmed rumour that uh, Anthony Banford was reported in that first up quarter scuffle. I think you might be right. Uh, the umpire did take his book out. McCormick squeezes it out. Wilson wide and into space it goes. Bassett applies a tackle on Chalmers. The umpire's letting that flow. And Tim, you'd have to suspect that uh, Fraser is injured. 
he's been sitting on the bench since midway through the first quarter. Well, they've had to clean that eye up. They, they got the cut above the uh, eye. I think they've cleaned that up now, and it probably could come back on. Poole using his uh, body pretty well. Kemp, gang tackled. Obston Bamford, as we go down to Michael on the Norwood bench. Yes, David, you just caught me on the hop, just going to check on that eye of Darren Fraser's. But the bench there, you see them, Downsborough, Couch and Doreen, just waiting to test that shoulder out. No changes there, Tim, either. No, plenty of fresh legs. Paul to Brown, he's 48 and closing with the breeze at his back. Floats it in, Brown, he gets his first in the 99 grand final. And they're back one closer, they're 3-1. Norwood are four goals to two minutes into the second turn. Well, Darrell Paul is going to be a worry in these contests. He's so good. Look at the way he dishes it out so quickly. Brownie on the run. Didn't have a lot of time to get that ball in the correct position to kick it. Held a very good goal. Darrell Paul for mine is the key to Port Adelaide winning. And up forward for Nord, Eugene Warrior and Pasco. Back down again. We're back to a seven-point margin now. Still, still favouring the red legs. Tyson, just one possession that first quarter. Not doing enough. Brown, good hands and board. Try to hit Morgan. Just running too quick past that contest. Great tackle from behind by James. Ubery over the top. Socket forward there by Dragenza. Back to Wobbs. Back to Dragenza to pull. A damaging man again. Gives it to his captain and Brown. Brown can see the lead out fast from Binky. Right. Binky, a fantastic mark. But what about the kick from Brown? Oh. There's some beautiful work done in the centre of the ground here. Tugenza just got a little foot to it to Obst. Obst fed it back to him. He got it over to Paul. Paul's little give to Brown. And then Brown's right-footed pass too. He's not very fancy on his right. Got it to Binky. who nearly spilled it, but pulled it in miraculously. Well, the Magpies, 1998. Best and Ferris and leading goal to get for the season. And Lachlan Lee takes a one-hander. But not a good result there for Binky. Across to Banford. He's taken by Pitt and throws the football away. Paul again comes into the contest. Again, we see Pitt over the top. So Nord defence. It's where it has to start for the Red Legs. As we go down to Michael Parsons. Yes, just checked with the, do the poor doctor as McGuinness gets a chance at goal. But Fraser is fine. Thanks, Michael, for that. McGuinness uh, scoring a point. Game of centimetres, six points the margin. Four and a half minutes into the second term. Guinness has been pretty good this year. 24 goals, 18. Neil from fullback. Elects to go straight down the middle to put. It was not a bad kick into the breeze, to be fair. Tyson handballs it out to Bassett, runs on. Wait just uh, applies enough pressure. Oh. It brings the handball undone. Wait did pretty well. Lee's ignored it. It sits for Tregenza. Forward he goes into space, Brown is there, going harder, charging at it. Oh, that was great courage, David Brown. What a skipper's effort. Didn't hesitate and took off after it, knowing, knowing that the pack was coming. Yerbury, pull, Brown. Well, he's hurt, he caught one too. McCormick got him, and that one's out of bounds on the foot. Well, David Brown is as inspirational, Tim, in that passage of play as anyone I've seen. He's straight at it, wasn't he? It was brilliant work, but... Uh... Great effort by McCormick just to knock him off him. balance. Because he was away, the little fella. Nord have a chance now through Neil. He takes the ball, runs, looks for support. He's got Kent. Kent goes one way with the handball, then comes back in board. Heads up towards Warrior. One, two, three. The umpire calls play on. Cunningham needs to get into the contest a bit more. We haven't seen enough out of Johnny Cunningham this afternoon. Comes wide towards Tregenza. Tregenza and Obst. Been a good contest again for Genza, just lays it out there for Poulton. Poulton goes across there to Morgan. Morgan sucks it up. Come here, guys. Go go he goes down, Morgan. Mad dog, Morgan. Comes up with it over the top from Cunningham. Cunningham to Yerbury. Needs to get the ball to boot. He does that up towards Pasco. Comes out hard, Big Lenny Pasco. Back to Harvey. He takes off. One, two, three kicks. He grinds it up. The little captain, that's his first goal, and the first one for the Red Legs in the second quarter. What a clever player Anthony Harvey is. Just see the way he summed that whole play up within second and just took off because he knew the other blokes had been in contest. He got it fresh, and just accelerated away and nailed a goal into the breeze. Very intelligent football.
12 points to the margin in favour of the Red Legs. Almost seven minutes into the second term. What a classic contest this has turned into. White, tripped by his own player, tried to get the handball out. It's a skirmish. And Cotton calls for the free kick, but it's not forthcoming. 3-2 to 5-2. Two goals the difference. We're going to see Fraser warming up here. Morgan had to commit himself to a play. Allowed Harvey to run down in the back play and uh, unfortunately got another goal kicked on him. Bamford squeezes one forward. Poole and Pitt. Tim, who's winning that one? You have to say Poole at the moment. Comfortably. And you think about uh, a performance of a player in a grand final and you, you always measure it against his opponent. And Pitt really is one of the premier defenders as we go down to the boundary. The, uh, the interchange is going to happen. Fraser is coming back on, and it is Morgan that's coming off, but uh, Timmy, you're right, he was stiff. He committed himself to the ball. Gutsy play, but Harvey summed it up and ran off him. Tyson over the top to Pitt, who had to stop. Bassett measured it pretty well. Back it goes to Pitt, who drills it short to Warrior. Warrior's running freely through half forward, turns it around to Pascoe. He's manhandled, couldn't quite get to the contest. The umpire said play on. Hobbs turns it around the corner, but not far enough. A point the result for the Red Leagues. Well, it's exciting when Nord go forward. They just have got such an efficient forward line. It's always danger that they may score a goal. And they did particularly well then again. North East's effort on Pascoe then was pretty good. We had three pretty tough encounters, the Red Legs. They're ready for today's against the Magpies. They have to be the side of the century. Tyson back to Harvey. Harvey gives it to Warrior. Warrior take this. He'll go back. Fraser's come on. There's no doubt Fraser will be picking up Harvey. Harvey's staying to find the football, Tim. James was 20 metres free in front of goal and the lead was ignored. When Tommy Carr kicked that ball, there was nobody front and centre for the Magpies. It was all Nord and they do it so well. They crumb well. Harvey again. Just pinpoints a pass. Well, this is a stretch Warrior kicking into the breeze here. He's already kicked one for the game. Lines up for his second. He's just dragged it as he kicked a little bit too hard there. So behind to Warrior. Lord now move out to a 14-point margin. Yeah, Eugene, he'd be disappointed in that effort. I mean, like you said, Roger James was an option. So you've got to go back and then you've got to kick those goals. Eugene Warrior's 23, Tim. Back in 94, he was drafted by the Crows. Is he worth another look at? I think all players play their best footy over 25. Fair enough. Bolton, long and into space. Good option, really. Harvey crashes back. Pitt leads the race in front of Poole. Squeezes it out. Cotton, who's been pretty important, finding some important possessions in this match. Well done, Kemp, to Bassett. Turning it around the corner. Well done, Northeast. Just got a fist to it, and Carr runs back onto it and concedes. Oh. He almost threw it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was a bit of scoop. Uh, it was scoop that I need that. I'm fine, could have paid this. And he was watching coming carved, trying to knock it over. He's, he's throwing that football. So 15 point margin now for the Red Legs. Northeast gives it back to Carr. Carr runs around Pasco and comes down the line. Fraser eyes for the football. Good work by Lockley. He's taken high in that contest. Oh, well but release of the football now for Obst. Ops got the leading Evans. He's out in front. Great work from behind by Fleming. Oh, oh picked up by McGuinness. The opportunist. Really? He does it again. That's his first for the game. A much needed one for the Magpies. Well, as clever as Harvey was in the last contest and goal, Phil McGuinness was equally as clever. Brilliant work here on the wing position. Well ran out of defence. They decided to go the opposite side. Good exchange of handballs there. Good contest here between Fleming and Evans, but look at the way he just tapped it up to himself, and he's the master of the quick kick, Phil McGuinness, but it's also accurate. He'd be very happy with that goal. The rapid fire kick. I don't know that there is anyone quicker in the competition getting ball to boot than McGuinness. 26 plays, 35, nine point ball game. Just on 11 minutes into the second term. Kemp, he's finding plenty of the ball too in the midfield for the Red Legs. Carr and Warrior, it's a manhandle. Carter. Releases northeast. The quick kick forward into space it goes. Obst misses it. Second effort was good to recover and provide a shepherd for James. Back to Obst. Can't oh, use his tackle. pace. Dragenza got him and dragged him to ground. Right around the hips. Kemp 
Obst again, didn't he get up quickly and get back in the contest and drives it towards full forward, Pascoe pushes off and marks. That's always the problem, Tim, isn't it? Just so tall, just so tall and got so much bulk. Comes in high and quick, North East is in trouble. North East has done very good in about five contests here, but if you just keep getting weight of numbers and thrust into the 50, then he's always going to be a danger. He's kicked uh, 17 goals in the last four weeks. Spearheaded their attack. Robert Neal, who was their leading goal kicker, or is their leading goal kicker with 36, has gone into the defence. And Pasco has reworked the forward line for the Red Legs beautifully. And that one's right through the middle. So he gets his second. And the Red Legs go to 6-5, Port Adelaide 4-2. Well, again, Obst, you've got to admire, that's two and three efforts to get that ball eventually down to Pasco. He just kept at it. And it's your second and third efforts in grand finals that create goals. And that's exactly what Obst did in the midfield. And Pasco finished it off well. Well, fellas, I think Damien Obst, I think he played about 99 games something for Sturt before he shifted across there to, to Norwood. So plenty of experience in his football. Bowman back to Kev. He straightens the body up. I love to see that in the footballer. Goes up. Carr again. Ah, oh, Cotton crossed the Warrior. Chips it forward. Just couldn't control it enough. So Norwood doing all the attacking in the second quarter. Well, their centre clearances, they're starting to get it on top there. They've got the last two out of the centre. And that was good work done there. In the end, Tommy Carr, unlucky not to finish that off, and well done, as Eugene we, Warrior. As we go down to Michael on the boundary. Yes, well tipped pick Timmy Geneva. They actually put Darrell Paul into the ruck that time to see if they could get a, a centre clearance of Port, uh, Port Magpies. They do have Damien Brown sitting on the bench and I wouldn't be surprised to see him get a run very shortly. 16 points to the margin. Port LA didn't need the next score. Harvey, Obst, they're combining pretty well. The kick was in short to Cunningham. Fraser claimed by James. James just applied a vice. The tackle was be a beauty. It was a very good tackle, wasn't it? Nord are doing exactly what... Uh, you know, you said about Aish and McIntosh getting out there quickly. This is what they would have been geeing them up to do. Yerbury down to Obst, who turns it around the corner. Tregenza with pace can go after this one. It sits nicely for the speedy wingman. Well done, uh, O'Loughlin, who just took McCormick to ground and created the hole in the opening. But Pitt oh, jumped on, on that one and Binky. I think he might give himself a 25-metre penalty, but I don't think Binky will mind as Carter comes off and Clayton comes on. Yeah, in the end, that wasn't... Uh, all that clever. You need to just keep the ball as deep in your forward line as you can. You may have just hurt Stephen Pitt's shoulder there a bit. In a grand final, Tim. I, I reckon that was worthwhile. Fair enough. Pretty tough contest. Bowman again, Tyson. Got James out wide. He was taken high. You can see Pasco moving out to his right. He goes in that direction. Great courage by Bassett. He's taken the mark. I don't think he has. Good tackle by Cunningham from behind. Unfigured. Figgett lifts the eyes, goes out wide. The kick's not good, hasn't cleared the contest because Cotton's there. He goes over the top to Harvey. Harvey's got Tyson in short, goes towards Kemp. Kemp inside 50, goes for the big kick. And it's just too big and it's a bit wide as well. With that, it's out of bounds on the full. Probably just a little bit of an experience there by Kemp. If you watched Harvey previously, just summed up the situation and took off and nailed it. What the about Bassett this? coming back with a play here. He did spill it. He did hit the ground, but did. what a great piece of courage to run back like that. He's got it in him, Scotty Bassett. Pitch in the hand of, hands of the trainers behind play as North East goes forward. Off, misses the mark. Bowman just stays over the top of him and makes sure that that ball's not released. Now, uh, Pitt, Tim, has been instrumental in driving the Red Legs forward. He's been very important, and he's really hurting at the moment. Yes, I, I think he's OK, though. I think he'll be all right to play on. Poole just burrows through. So too does Dobbs. The 35-year-old gets clear. Last one wide to the flank. I think the boundary line might beat all players. We're 16 minutes in to the second term, and it's a 16-point margin in favour of the Red Legs. I think you could feel some anxiety sneaking into the Port Adelaide coaching box. They'd want to be at least level at half-time, and Nord would want to be at least two or three up. Knocked down by Chalmers. Over the top there again. Look like McGuinness coming up with the football. Brown, a chance here for the Magpies to go forward through Fraser. Fraser just pushes it, stabbed at that kick without controlling it. So another behind of the Magpies. They move on to 4-3, 27.
Norwood 6-6, 42. We played 16 and a half minutes into the second quarter. Just a good series of handballs away from the contest there, but Fraser, not with a brilliant left foot, didn't have the confidence to go onto it. Oh, Fleming, oh, well, back. that is a faux pas, a faux pas. That, right at the stage, the match was critically balanced. The next goal to the Red Legs, and they're starting to gain confidence. Now, Port Adelaide and a goal here brings them right back into the contest with their tails up. This is a good move by Norwood to bring Downsborough on. I just think that Yerbring has worked very hard in the final series. It needs to be kept fresh. But uh, Bamford here with an opportunity. He kicks this goal. Port start to get their tails up. Bamford, 25-year-old from Kedron Grange. Works for the Port Magpies as a development officer. Well, let's see if he can develop their grand final. As he steers it through, he does. So they're right back at the contest as Bamford gets his first. Well, as you called it, David, sometimes momentum in a game is very important. Nord seemed to have it in this quarter. And another goal would have seen him just really produce a little break of, say, 22 points into half time is a very important one. Now, we've probably got 10 minutes left of this quarter. That goal is a very important one. Darrell Paul up against Downsborough. The ball will favour Brad. Big pull it comes down, hits on as far as there as Cunningham. Going back, Brian Lees with the football. Takes a good mark. And Lees, he just pushing up, he is. A good contest there with Lockie Bowman. Heads up. In front by Chalmers. Well read there again by Bamford. Bamford goes over the top to O'Loughlin. Back to Bamford again. He runs on strong. Right leg this time into the top of the square. Big thump from behind from Neil once again. The Maggies have the numbers. Evans, he'll turn and kick over his shoulder. He does that. Has he brought it back far enough? I don't think so. Another behind to the Maggies. Well, he had the right option in mind. Mm. He turned around. He saw the bloke at the top of the square. And I thought he was going to give the handball off, and then he decided to have a snap for goal. Put himself under a bit of pressure then. Neil takes the long option. See, uh, perhaps that breeze is not as strong as we think. Downs was the target. Chalmers releases O'Loughlin. Back to Chalmers is in the double play. Wider still at Stragenza. Had a little fumble. It's mental pressure out there. It's hard and tough. Clements applied to smother. Cotton has been very good in this second term to Clements, who's released the run, has a bounce, lifts the eyes and drills it forward. But Clayton, who started on the bench, dropped into the hole. Well, he didn't mark it, but he showed great courage. But James recovers and goes towards goal. It's through. Oh, it gets his first in the Red Legs. Just counterpunch with that great goal. That's a team lifter built from defence. Well, they fought very hard for it on the 50-metre line in their defence. Ran the ball all the way up through Clements. See a change being made here. Cotton's coming off the crouch. But then it was just an excellent effort. Roger Jones, Clayton unlucky, did everything right. Just built the mark. Showed the courage, dropped into the hole, but Roger James, don't give him half a chance. Paul O'Loughlin, Brown and Fraser in the middle for the Maggies. Downsborough, James, Cunningham and Harvey. Downsborough comes up with it, it kicks wide, a chance out here. The speedster takes off and Kemp will get there first. No, he doesn't. Good work by Paulton from behind. You see both players going back. The bench, Yerbury. Great effort in that first quarter. Jonathan Yerbury. Go, Johnny! Back at the play, Downsborough thumps it down. Tregenza, head down over the top of it. Upended by Crouch, the umpires allowed that to flow. It was Clements who thumped it back from where it came. We are almost 21 minutes into the second term. 34 plays 48, a 14-point ball game in favour of the Red Legs. And Port Adelaide were the red-hot favourites coming into this match. In fact, I think you could get three or fours to one on the Red Legs. Downs were down, Bassett claimed, Figert got him, but James Clever. With the handball, back it goes to Ops. James again from 55 out. He spears it in short. Northeast thumps the ball towards the line. It needs to go out. It doesn't. Was that a throw? Warrior back to Pasco, and the umpire said it was. A throw was the call. You picked it right, David. Good effort to keep the ball in in the end. But uh, just a little scoop. Oh, great excitement. 
As you see, the umpires have finally made a decision in this quarter. That's the first free we've seen. He's back with Carr. Carr thumps. This will favour Pitt. He's out in front. Good work from behind there by Obbs. Now be sat upon there by Chalmers. Umpire calls play on. Bregenza misses it again. He pulls James off the football. Back to Kemp. Kemp gives a chance here for Pasco. He'll run onto this if it sits nicely for him. It doesn't. At the back is Bowman. Bowman gives it back to Pasco. Pasco over the top there to Tyson. The umpire's found a free kick. It may go back to Lockie Bowman. It does. So a chance again, Tim, from Norwood. We see Bowman from around about 50 metres he'll kick from in, into the breeze. He really will test the centre-half forward. Just notice uh, a little bit of a difference in the two sides at the moment. Port Adelaide's ball handling isn't as clean. And you just see Norwood, every time they get an opportunity, they run it away well. Bowman has played most of his career at centre-half back. They see the breeze has held it up. Chalmers comes across. The spoil down in front. Warrior stands over the top of the, the Magpie defender there. I think it's Carr at the bottom of the pack. It is. Looking for the free kick. So just out of the goal square. The umpire will be thumping the ball down again. He does that. Pasco over the back is James. He comes up with the football. Beautiful skills there by James around his body. There isn't too many better players when they get hold of the football in this competition than Roger James. Well, again, I spoke about Port Adelaide's ball handling, and they've just spilled a couple of things. There was a mark there by Chalmers. There was a ball that went through the legs of the defender and picked up beautifully by Roger James here and finished off well. Their ball handling at the moment is really about 20% better than Port's, and it's paying off for them with goals. Well, 20 points, David. Magpies have got a lot of football to do to get back in this game. Well, I think they've got the talent to get back into it, no question, but uh, Norwood certainly are dishing it up to them. O'Loughlin, who's been moved into the centre square to get some run. Pitt, who's tightened up on pool, and I think uh, is emerging since that last crushing encounter with Vicky. It seems to have fired him up. And Pooley's uh, match fitness will be tested, no question about that. Well, there's some happy fans enjoying the fine weather conditions. Downsborough, Crouch took front position, went towards the boundary line. I think the Red Leagues will be just quite happy to go into halftime with this break. They'll wash a little bit of time off the clock. Well, no question, South Australian football is alive and well. Big crowd at the grand final, great contest, and a good uh, effort by all players. Downsborough down to Kemp, forward into space. No mark taken. Oh, there's a free. No, says the umpire. Yes, says the umpire. Kevin Chambers says that one was too high. Little spray, 25-metre penalty. And Clayton. Kevin Chambers, uh, an experienced umpire, Tim. Whoa. Four grand finals for him. And this one right on the 50-metre line. So it was a 50-metre penalty. Clayton has got a bigger, <laughs> big enough kick to make the distance, but... Um, Port desperately need this guy. 50 games in the uh, second semi-final. This is game number 51. Only eight career goals. And his ninth would be a big team lifter. And it is. It's exactly what Port Adelaide want. And the dogged halfback gets one back for the Magpies. Well, that's a good goal in the end. It's one that uh, Port Adelaide needed to uh, keep in the contest. Because if you were writing a script for Norwood to win this game, they have played it right to the letter. Their first quarter was excellent with the breeze. The second quarter has probably been better. And I just reckon Port Adelaide need to hang in there and be around about one or two goals around the mark at uh, half-time. Because otherwise, Nord with the th breeze in the third quarter could cause some damage. So that goal to Clayton is a very important one. 14-point margin now, still favouring the Red Legs. We'll make it down to Michael Parson because the Magpies made a couple of quick changes there, Michael. Yes, Mark. Binky and Clayton have come off and Brown Morgan have replaced them. The back, Jared Poulton. The Magpies go forward again. That's a straight kick heading up towards Evans. Over the back there. Big Brown's come on. He's gone to full forward. to be picked up there by Neil. The kick towards Waite. Tyson, good use of the body. Takes the mark and heads home with the run. McGuinness comes in board. Couldn't take the part of that one. It was Krauss. The kick wasn't good. Warrior comes across. He takes it. Also, he needs support. He handles it out in front of him. And the umpire is giving him the free kick. 
Oh, Colton looked a little bit reluctant to give that football back. Warrior wants to get the ball moving, he does that. Heads up towards Pasco, the big frame down in front. Bassett comes across the front and takes a mark. So Scotty Bassett, he's already kicked one in the first quarter, will line up for his second. He's a wild card, Scotty Bassett, let me tell you. He can really take a mark, and then North East is battling out with Pasco one-on-one. Figert has to take Bassett out of that contest. And he just allowed him too much of a run at it. And Scotty Bassett, I tell you, he'll take the mark. He's a very courageous player. Spent a bit of time at Fort Power this year, Mark. This kid. Yes, he has. Good future ahead of him. Bassett, the high ball is a breeze ball to back. I think it has. The umpire went pretty quickly to his left and came back to his right. So second goal to Bassett. And the Red Legs now move out to a 20-point margin over the Magpies. Well, again, I said if you want to stick to this Norwood script of them winning, this is exactly what they have to do. They have to be about three goals up at half time. And they've got a 20-point margin at the moment. There is still a question, Tim, though, isn't there, of uh, the Red Legs fitness in the final term? I reckon they've shown that they're OK. Uh, all the players that were under a cloud, Neil and Harvey, all, all running on very well. Chalmers. A booming kick into the forward line. Good contest, Neil, hands and knee on feet. Brown, Poole, Clayton. Well, could he be the man? That's an eagle school level. Well, that is just a very clever kick. Turned it around on the left foot and made it look like he'd be doing it forever. He did this in the second semi-final. He came off and in the last quarter came back on into the forward line. He kicked two very important goals to... Uh, just get the momentum Port Adelaide's way, but Brown's handball to Paul was brilliant. And I don't know, you'll see, look at this, how quick this hand is. Look at that. That was an excellent handball to Paul, to Clayton. And like you said, just did it so well on his left foot. 60 leads, 46. Again, we see Downsborough up over the top. Harvey's in there, tackled there by Fraser from behind. Lachlan and Banford in there quickly as well for the Magpies. Bit of talent. Out of Obstin Big, I was just thinking exactly that, Tim. I think we're all thinking that. So Stephen Williams is not playing favourites with his uh, seasoned players as Poole flicks it out and turn Chalmers. Now Banford has tripped and is that a deliberate one in the report? What's the umpire saying? Said so it's accidental. And it's a free kick. Because if it was deliberate, it's a report and a 50-metre penalty. And that's what the Port Adelaide... No, he tried for his shorts, and it slipped down. Right decision by the umpire. Yeah, no, Downsbury's uh, effort was definitely genuine. A good decision by... Uh, well, this has freed up Chalmers, because Downsbury was still on the mark there. Chalmers just moved in, only 15 minute metres from that contest. It gives chance here for big Brett Chalmers. He can kick a football a country mile. I think, I think uh, with his powerful leg, Mark, he'll certainly make the distance, and the accuracy is not a problem. So it was the right choice as Chalmers gets his first. Port Adelaide are making a spirited comeback. They trail by eight points. Well, they just keep answering, don't they? When we just think Nord is starting to edge that lead that they need out, it's a bit of unfortunate for Downsbury because he, one, he gives away a little free kick. He has to stay in the mark. His man just runs down five metres. Got to back up your teammates. Chalmers nailed the kick well. well. It was a very defensive quarter that first quarter. We only saw six goals kick. The second quarter we've seen 11 so far, so it really has been a forwards game in the second quarter. Again, the Magpies over the top of it through Fraser. In fact, I think it could be Obbs at the bottom of that pack. No, with White. Julian Waite. Got have to wait for that one. He hasn't had a tremendous afternoon yet. He hasn't touched the football. He hasn't had a kick or a handball at this stage of the game. Julian Waite. He hasn't had a kick, sorry. He's had a few handballs. Looking at my stats here. He's had five handballs. I reckon you'll find, Mark, that he's got to play a very defensive role on Tyson. So to try and just really stop him, because he's been an absolute match winner for the Red Legs in previous weeks. Cunningham, Harvey, Harvey under the boot will favour Tregenza. Tregenza takes a good support there by Bamford. Across the Brown. Brown, 55 out. The loging left leg goes back. Running with it was McCormack. And just quite content to let it go through for another behind. So the Magpies move on to 8-5, 53. They still trail by seven points. Nord, 9-6, 60. 
Excellent first half so far. Robbie Neal stood up well. Neal, another booming kick, pull underneath this one. Crashes it down, but Harvey rows it. Hobbs just threw the handball out in hope, and Wade was wrapped up. I think you're right about uh, Wade and Tyson, because uh, Wade is playing a defensive game. It just can't allow Tyson the room. He's just been so good in previous finals. But just forever kicking the ball inside 50 that they have to stop that supply. Well, Tyson's Charles. only had one kick. Sorry, Dave. Tyson's yeah. only had one kick, but also had five handballs. OK, it's uh, an impact. McCormick. Clayton misses him. But the siren sound, it's half-time in the 99 grand final. Seven points to the margin in favour of Norwood, uh, Tim. And I guess when it was 20 points out at one stage, it was looking pretty, pretty bleak uh, for Port Adelaide, but they responded as only Port Adelaide can. Well, it was important that they did for uh, their chances to win this game because Norwood really did set it up particularly well. I was uh, impressed with the way they run. They forever uh, crumb front and centre. The best I've seen in the league. And when the ball spoiled away, they're always there front and centre. It's been a hard game for both sides. Nobody's earned a, a kick easily. And it's just been a really good first half. So at half-time in the grand final, the scores are Norwood, nine goals, 660. Port Adelaide, eight goals, 553. You're watching the SANFL grand final exclusive to ABC Sport. Well, what a game it is, uh, 13 points. I'm losing my voice. Seven points at halftime. It really is an exciting affair here at uh, SANFL headquarters. Stay with us throughout halftime. We'll speak with uh, the chief executive of the SANFL, Lee Wicker. We'll also uh, pick the ABC SANFL team of the year. And we'll also settle the score on who did take the SANFL mark of the year. We've got a couple of very good marks to choose from. I promise you that. As Tim Ginova re rejoins us, Tim, I guess... Uh, you're an action man and you would have enjoyed the pre-match entertainment, no doubt about that. Now Tim, the uh, star uh, force and the police were doing all sorts of things before. The, there was a couple of burglars trying to steal well, the Premiership Cup. They had to uh, arrest a couple of unsavoury characters. They did it particularly well, just with the, uh, the dogs on display there as well. The way they attacked to commands is brilliant. Now the uh, SGIC-1 rescue helicopter comes in, the dog squad, the dog patrol squad comes out, and the cup stealer fires off a couple of shots with his gun, and the dogs are released. Now I reckon Norwood wanted this dog in their team. I wouldn't want him chasing me. And I reckon Port Adelaide wanted that one. <laughs> now we were trying to work out who these offenders were. Well, they got them in the end. They put them into the uh, van. Now I saw one of them was uh, Paul Patterson former West Adelaide big man who got the offender, but look who they've got. The Jumbo. The Jumbo Prince. That's not bad, the black and white stripes. And KG. <laughs> Just wonder how he would have felt about being uh, run down by the dog. Interesting that, isn't it? Yeah, they did particularly well, and of course, uh, it's very comforting to know that the SA Police Force are uh, pr protecting me and you after the game anyway. Yes, uh, I wouldn't like one of those dogs after me, Tim. <laughs> now, what about in the reserves? There was another important match uh, played earlier today, uh, Sturt and South Adelaide in the reserves grand final. And Sturt won that one, 18 goals, 17. 125 to 8 goals, 9. 57, a 68 point win to the Double Blues. Their last reserves win was in 1977 against Woodville. And a big day for Sturt Club. They were very disappointed at not making the senior grand final. I was talking to Phil Carmen in about 95. He's very concerned with the depth of the club. And in five years, they've really turned that around, haven't they? I mean, their depth of the club is excellent now. And they showed that with the reserves premiership. It's very important that you have the depth to forever be coming through into your senior ranks. And uh, Phil Carmen very pleased with the reserves, boys. It's a great moment, any flag, isn't it? Uh, and the double blue boys will remember this for a long time. They uh, won the second semi-final by 37 points. And South Adelaide got to the grand final with a thrilling two-point victory over Port Adelaide in the preliminary final to set up this rematch. But Sturt in the final wash were just too good. In the end, South might have uh, had the edge taken off them, I think, by the game in the preliminary final. So Sturt, the, uh, the better side all year. And uh, here's the scoreboard in uh, that match. 18 goals, 17 to 8 goals, 9. 68 point uh, margin by my uh, calculations. A pretty impressive scoreline 
for the double blues that have been congratulated in the reserves grand final. Well, earlier uh, we caught up with Lee Wicker and we asked him about the excitement of a Port and Norwood grand final. Lee, a Port and uh, Norwood grand final always generates a lot of excitement. I think the, uh, the rivalry between these clubs is fitting to end this mil uh, millennium of uh, football history. Uh, it's inter interesting, they've played each other 13 times in grand finals and Nord uh, 8 to uh, Port Adelaide 5, so I don't know if that's any indication of what might happen today. A lot of people were wondering why there wasn't a live telecast in the metropolitan area. Well David, we've got an agreement with the ABC and it's very clear and uh, it's subject to sell out. We're disappointed, we haven't been able to uh, deliver metropolitan, but certainly uh, country South Australia will be receiving a live telecast. And great news, of course, is it looks like the Northern Territory League will join us just a couple of years away. Well, that's pretty exciting uh, uh, progress at the moment. Uh, the uh, next stage is to meet the uh, Northern Territory Government and we're hopeful of uh, some funding support. Uh, finally, we uh, will go then to the AFL and we're very confident we can get the package uh, together. I guess now the, need, the uh, league needs to look ahead. Uh, what plans have they got into 2000 and, and so forth? Well, I think uh, with the expansion of our competition, uh, increasing seating here at Football Park uh, to maintain our uh, international status uh, as a stadium, it's important because we're in the uh, international arena uh, and national arena with uh, both uh, football and uh, concerts and the like. So they're probably the two major uh, components for the uh, new millennium. How's the financial viability of all the SANFL clubs? Well, most clubs, I think, uh, have done an excellent job. Uh, Eagles and uh, Glenelg this year have uh, re uh, emerged as a pretty good uh, on and off field clubs. They've played in the finals. Sturt uh, did the same last year. We're confident with the uh, future ahead that uh, our clubs will uh, continue to prosper and uh, strengthen uh, as we go into uh, the new era of footy. And how close are we to uh, extending the grandstand at uh, Football Park and extending the seating? Well, we'd be uh, confident uh, towards the end of this year we uh, will be making an announcement. Uh, obviously, we can't uh, start work during the year, uh, but uh, we'd be hopeful of starting August next year. Lee, congratulations to you and Max and the SANFL. You've done a great job. Thanks very much. Good on you, uh, Lee. They have done a good job, Max and Lee, and the team, haven't they? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm excited about the Northern Territory option. If that yep. does come off in 2001, I think we can have a really good competition and uh, even up the numbers again. Get rid of the bye. Yep, wouldn't be a bad thing. Well, South Australian footy uh, has presented us a great grand final today, but uh, throughout the year, they have given us a lot of excitement. Not a bad little package, that, Tim. Uh, very good, and uh, I think you've shot uh, your mouth off early there on the mark of the year. You reckon? Oh, I don't know. You might get it. We'll make a decision on that in uh, just a moment as we go down to Michael Parsons on the boundary. Yes, thank you very much, David. You'll notice my hat's on back to front. I think that's as close as I'm going to be able to be a touch. great tennis very player. But uh, with me, Leighton Hewitt. Leighton, you've been playing some tennis, but you're at the football. Are you a footy fan? Yeah, I am. I'm actually a Crows fan, to tell you the truth. And I try and uh, get back to the footy every now and then when I'm home. But, you know, it's been a tough travelling year this year, so I don't get that many occasions to get back. Yeah, pretty tough. I believe you. We all believe you. But today's game, it's been pretty good so far. Who do you think is going to win? 
I don't know, it's a tough contest at the moment, but I, but I think Norwood's played probably the better first half, and I think if they can stay with them early in the third quarter, they've got a great chance. And my mum told me never drop out of school, but you did, and you've been tripping around the world. What's the best thing that's happened to you in the last 12 months? I'm not sure. I think uh, that just being the number one Davis Cup player at the moment has been unbelievable for me. Uh, just There's been so much pressure on and come out and to have some great wins the last two or three weeks. It's just been an unbelievable feeling. And you said it's pretty tough travelling. What is the worst thing about the lifestyle you've got going at the moment? Yeah, I think travelling is the worst, but it's just, you know, living out of a suitcase every week and uh, staying in hotels and just going to the airports and stuff like that. Uh, sort of the novelty does wear off, but that's part of being a professional tennis player and that's what we've got to live with. Mate, if you're having trouble with those suitcases, I'm a big, strong man. I'll be able to help you around the world. But Leighton, again, from everybody here, congratulations, and uh, we look forward to watching you again next year. Thanks, mate. Beautifully Thanks, done, Michael. Beautifully done, Leighton. And uh, beautifully done, Wade Arthurs and Leighton Hewitt defeating uh, the Russians. Four and one, Kafelnikov and Safin didn't stand a chance. Now we've got <laughs> France in the final of the Davis Cup, Tim. Yeah, on clay too, so it'll be interesting to see who they uh, line up with. Uh, but I think those two boys have done us proud. Yeah, I think they're doing it pretty well. And as we promise you, the SNFL ABC Team of the Year. A lot of discussion on this as we go to the lineups. We might get uh, Mark Naley to join us because uh, Mark had a vocal uh, hand in this one, particularly the back line, Mark. Yes, David, I, it was. I mean, we had uh, the people that had been a, a part of our team this year, which was Andrew Page, yourself, Tim, and also Michael Parsons and myself, and also our statistician. Gary Window as well. And Gary Window as well, and our statistician, and Ian Moggage, who watches the game very closely. But we see that halfback Carter had a fantastic year for the Magpies with Ed Richardson at centre halfback. His form with West Adelaide was very, very good. And Maloney, the double blues player there, Tim, on the other halfback flank was good. But the backline player, well, the backline at least, was not too many surprises. Stephen Hall, particularly, uh, Tim has had a very good year at fullback. Along with Powell and a pit, to, you know, the fullback line, but also Lees could have been a, an option at centre half back as well as Richardson. Well, we've got a little bit of uh, vision of Stephen Hall crashing through, picking up Adam Richardson, who was named at full forward. He was the fullback, of course, uh, in the state side against Victoria earlier in the year and did a terrific did job. Did very well, didn't he? And uh, end up having a sterling here, but it uh, wouldn't be a, an easy task picking up Adam Richardson, let me tell you. Now, Mark Naley mentioned Ed Richardson at centre half back. There was a lot of discussion, Brian Lees perhaps at. Uh, or Ed Richardson? In the end, Ed Richardson, I think, got the, uh, the majority vote. He was just very, very good all year. And uh, just showing his courage there on screen, just the way he backed back and took the mark. But he, he just for, provided a lot of run as well, which you wouldn't expect from a guy his size. As we go down to Michael Passes, Michael, the uh, centre position was virtually unanimous with the 99 McGeary medalist Damien Squire named there. Yes, he definitely got my vote, particularly when he did move into the centre. He started the year on the half forward flank. He came to Sturt a couple of years ago to get that opportunity to get around the ball a little bit more. And when he did, and I think about round eight, I think he unwound with about seven best on ground performances. Who, could, who else could have taken that position? Colville, of course, and uh, Lennon on the other wings. Uh, Tim, there was a lot of discussion. Wait, uh, his form in the early part of the year was very, very good, and he was very stiff, other than an injury to miss out. In the midfield, it's probably one of the hardest areas to pick in a uh, team of the year as such, because uh, every team's midfield is normally to uh, their engine room that uh, produce the wins, so it's very hard. You've normally got five or six players that are all playing well at every club, so they're the tough decisions, so if you make it, you've done well. Mellor on a half uh, forward flank, no oh, dispute there. But... Outstanding year, Mellor, and really, you had to kick 50 goals from a half forward flank and just be the uh, the other focal point with Richardson. He just does it so well and he does the defensive things in the forward zone, which I love. I guess uh, Tim Symes, uh, along with uh, Pavlich from the Eagles, were the contenders for centre-half forward. Yeah, Symes, he just had uh, probably the more consistent year and <laughs> lined up for, for his state as well. And I was very impressed with Tim Symes' year and I just hope he can take it out on the golf course and just improve there. Now, in the uh, forward pockets, we had uh, Julian Burton, who came second in the goal kicking. Uh, Justin Sicolella, whose uh, year as a rover with the Eagles was just terrific, but Adam Richardson was the standout uh, full forward, no doubt about that. Had a late run too with goals, didn't he? But uh, Burton definitely deserved his spot. He was so consistent during the year, so he deserved his spot in the pocket. But Adam Richardson, give him half a chance, is such a powerful kick. And we he might lines get, up at full forward. He does now. We might go down to Michael Parsons again because he had a big hand in this. It was a very difficult job picking the, uh, the rucks and the ruck roving positions, Michael. Yes, David, definitely a very difficult decision. There's so many good ruckmen going around. Biglands, as we said, Damien Arnold from Central Districts, and the two guys that are out here today in Chalmers when he played, and Yerbury. But I think the guy that we've gone with just got ahead because of his strength around the ground in particular. 
Red Biglands it was, Mark Naley, he's, uh, he's had a terrific year, including state representation. Yes, Dave, we saw him last week. He's a lone hand. He had Wiggins there towards the last part of the season coming back from injuries, but Red Biglands, he was outstanding. He's had a taste of... Uh, I've been involved in an AFL club and i just love to see him go to that next level and go on. But Danny Holm from the uh, Bulldogs um, was very, very consistent year. I mean, he's a captain, he's just a great leader and sets by, you know, really leads by example. And the little chicky, the retiring chicky, not quite retiring, but he looks like he's he's about to because he's pretty old and he's done the slow down a bit, but he's still got our first Rovers award this year. Kelly, David Brown and Weatherall sit on the interchange uh, bench, Tim. It was very tough to fit right. everybody on the bench. There were a lot of good players who missed out. Well, you know you've got a good side when Richard Kelly, uh, Sir Richard Kelly, I yes. call him, has had such a sterling year and uh, named on the interchange. He probably could have found himself in uh, any other side. Not a bad side, was it? I think uh, you'll agree that uh, they are the best that the SANFL put up in their positions this year. Well, the great uh, point of contention, of course, was the mark of the year, Tim. Yes, well, we had a couple of beauties and there uh, was three that we've uh, picked out. Well, the, one, the first one that we picked out was uh, Ben McEntee, round 22, Unley Oval. I think you'll enjoy this one. Bit of a hanger. Yeah, he does a lot of it, doesn't he? Just a, a vertical leap trick from a standing start. It's, a, it's one thing to get up there, and it's another thing to keep your eye on it and catch it. He's going to have to work on his landings, though. He is. Now, the second mark was uh, round six, Eagles and Sturt, Scotty Matthews, Took a big one. He just took off, flew right over the top of the pack. It was a pretty good mark. Oh, witness this one. It was an absolute beauty. Came from nowhere. And that's just a pure leap. That's not a ride. It's just right over the top. And I love the somersault work at the end. The roll. Oh, yeah. Bit of splash, but not too bad in the end. Now, uh, Sujai Cook was the final contender for the mark of the year. Uh, in the qualifying finals against the Eagles, right here at Footy Park. And I think you'll enjoy this one too. Enjoy the commentary. We got rid of the commentary, but that <laughs> is a big, big fly. That is a good mark, and you're probably a little bit worried at that stage when he's, when he's coming down. But uh, an excellent mark in the end, and I, I loved your call. Put you on the spot. Yeah. Who was it? Um, Who got it? I'm going with Scotty Matthews personally. But uh, you're a Sujay Cook man, so we're one all. I think Mark Naley might have to make, make the decision on it. Well, Nails is off camera. We might just uh, see if we can roll one of these uh, marks again. But for mine, I went for Sujay Cook. I just thought his was just an unbelievable uh, leap. And uh, from my perspective, Scotty Matthews' one was a really good mark. And in round six, we actually called that as the mark of the year early. So you, yeah, exactly. I've actually worked with you probably in ten rounds, and we've had a mark of the year in each one of them. So well, here is. Mark Nally, I don't know whether you agree with me, because if you don't, we're going to have to change. <laughs> but is that the mark of the year? Well, David, it was a sensational mark, and I think uh, Sue J. Cook, I think we, we might just outnumber, I, I think, uh, a Tim's effort there. Two to one. Two to one. Sue Jay. So Sue Jay gets it. Well done, mate. So Sue Jay gets the mark of the year, and Scotty Matthews has got to be stiff, because if... Uh, actually, I suppose we could award a joint award. We've done it in the McGarry Medal. They've done it with the Brownlow Medal. In fact, I think we'll go so far as to say it's a joint award this year because <laughs> they were virtually unsplittable. They were identical marks in every just respect. Just about exactly right. So I think maybe for the first time in history we've got a joint winner. I think we might go that way. As uh, we look at some of the key plays of the first half, Tim, very interesting game of football. Really tough, yes, really tight it? and very hard football. But I thought when uh, Brown gold early in the uh, second quarter, things were heading the way of Port Adelaide. I think they were starting to look like they could make a charge. Well, they certainly needed to make... Uh, an impact on the scoreboard because Norwood were doing all of it and all the attacking and uh, just Brown's steadiness around goal he always seems to nail him and uh, Daryl Poole's work in the ruck has been brilliant today and look at the way Brown just off a couple of steps nails the goal but Norwood just kept coming and coming and coming in waves and just having attacks into the 50 and, and creating goals makes a fair uh, comment to say that Poole's almost had a hand in all of the Port Adelaide goals he has he's been very important to him up there had to have a little stint in the uh, second quarter in the ruck and then back at centre half forward before they stop play. So he'll start there again, and he is very important to him. And what about Anthony Harvey? Um, we talked about his importance to the Red Leagues. I said in the call just how clever and how intelligent he is as a player. You just watched the attack there by Pascoe. Got hold of it, just summed it up within a second that he could just take off and nail the goal, make sure of it. And he's such a clever player when it comes to that. Earns possessions, but very clever with them. Plenty of stats and uh, very clever. He works hard in defence as well as in the forward line. Oh, up and down the ground. The amount of territory he covers, uh, not unlike his brother, I suppose. They've got it in their blood. Now, Cunningham's not firing up at this stage for the Red Legs either. He'll need a lift. They've got a good midfield, though. You've got other guys that are chipping in. You've got Kemp that's 
uh, running front and square. You've got Cotton getting the ball and James. I reckon he's had a very good game so far, Roger James. Now you mentioned in the commentary that Phil McGuinness is one of the quickest players getting the uh, ball hand to foot in the competition. This one's a very good example. Good contest then from full forward and full back, but the way he just flipped that up to himself and threw it onto the boot, flat out, excellent goal. Now that time, uh, Port Adelaide were looking like they were gonna make a charge and maybe just really come hard at the Redlegs, but Roger James just plucked one out of nowhere, which is a real steadier for the Redlegs. Well, again, Norwood, they just keep thrusting forward, getting a bit of a break, Port will get a goal. Unlucky for Clayton, he did the right things there, it was just the momentum that took the ball away from him. Oh, give a crumb to Roger James and look out. He will finish it off. Well, I think you've set up our uh, our final highlight, which is another James solo effort. I mean, he was probably the player in that second quarter that really kept uh, the red legs in it. Well, he was he was making the charge. Look at the way he's just got that around his body. Into the breeze, not an easy snap. Such a talent, and uh, I'd like to see him really further his AFL career next season. As we go to the halftime scoreboard, if you've just joined us, Norwood a nine goal six, they led by 13 points at uh, quarter time and they lead by seven points at halftime. Port Adelaide are 8-5, and you suggest that the game is really still in the balance, Tim? It certainly is, and Nord had an excellent quarter into the breeze in that second term. Um, they're using up a lot of their energy points, but they had to, and uh, this third quarter is very important to them. Their goal scorers there at the moment, James and Pascal and Bassett with two each. Singles to Kemp, Harvey and Warrior. For Port Adelaide, Clayton came on and kicked two, and then singles to Brown, Chalmers, Tregenza, McGuinness, Bamford and Poole. Statistically, uh, Mark Naley, uh, as we look through them, the inside 50 is still a very close stat. You always look at uh, how close a game is when you look at how often the sides are going inside 50 and scoring. Well, Dave, you also look at their possession rates as well. In the first quarter, there was eight dips, uh, with Magpies having 69 compared to Norwood's 61 possessions. That's uh, kicks and handball. In the second quarter, they had 73 apiece. That's how close it is. But uh, maybe the one of the biggest stats there or variation at least, comes with the big Ruckman with the hit outs with 23 to the Norwoods, Ubery and Downsbury compared to um, the Magpies, Chalmers and uh, also big uh, Pooley in there as well with 16. So a little bit there, but thinner square breaks also favouring the Magpies. Now that does surprise me because Norwood did a couple of times there, Tim, in that second quarter get the ball out pretty easily. When they're on top, and I think that's when they threw Paul in, they ended up getting those breaks that uh, ended up with that 12-7 score. As we go down to Michael Passes, Michael, weather conditions, I guess there's still a breeze blowing, but how strong is it? Yes, I'd actually say it's dropped off a little bit, David. It's still probably one or two goals favouring that northern end, but it did pick up there in that second quarter. But as I said, just dropping off a little bit, but definitely favouring the northern end. Well, Tim, the players are back on the oval. What does Stephen Williams say to his players at halftime? Basically that they had to settle down and they've done that in that first half would be very happy with the way they hit back at a couple of the uh, big breaks that Norwood had created. But now, it's a very old cliche, but the third quarter is the Premiership quarter. You really have to work. And even for Port to be level or a goal or two up is exactly where they would want to be. Nord, on the other hand, want to have an absolute blistering third quarter. Stay with us for the second half. It'll be a beauty. I can guarantee it. Derek Woodcock puts the ball down. Your commentator is Mark Naley. Yes, the second half, the SNFL Grand Final. For season 1999, an hour of football left. You're enjoying this at home. Just sit back and relax. Put your feet up. This is exclusive to ABC TV Sport. Well, Magpies, Yerbury's back on. With him will be Brett Chalmers contesting the ruck. Yerbury gets his hand down. Coming in was Kemp. Kemp comes around his body, goes up forward. Nord playing in front through Bassett again. Across the Bowman. Bowman goes up high. Magpies had the numbers. They could spoil this between the two of them. They did. That was northeast and Paulton. Nord to forward line putting a fair bit of pressure on. Morgan goes to the ground. Can't keep his feet. Figgett can't take it either. Out wide is Lees. Lees comes up with it. Goes wide with the kick. Back there. Over the back was McCormack. Big pull comes out, taken on there by Tyson. Gives it across the weight, a weight around his body. Comes back to Davy. Davy dodges one way, then gets the ball to boot around his shoulder. Coming back his weight, he's taken by Bowman, but a good mark. Going back with a flight of pain. He felt that, David. Well, I guess uh, you've got to commit yourself in the grand final. This guy is just full on commitment. You can see why he's rated so highly by Port Adelaide. Towards half forward he goes. Evans was up on a big fly, couldn't take it. Fleming left it behind, but uh, still was able to ricochet it out. Tyson just came off the contest. Obbs didn't. Stayed down over it. A smother on Fleming's kick. O'Loughlin releases the ball short. Evans couldn't get through heavy traffic. Finally, it's Fraser. 
releasing Morgan and Brown on the left foot, turns it around, and it's home. So it's a one-point ball game, one and a half minutes into the third quarter, and if you talk about the premiership term, well, this is it for Port Adelaide, as Brown gets his second. The Port Adelaide fans go wild, and we're back to a one-point ball game. Oh, Tim, you just see there a tremendous build-up here by the Magpies. They just had numbers around the football. Again, that bashing, crashing style the Magpies are renowned for came out on top again. David Brown, such a good finisher, isn't he? We saw it earlier in the second quarter, and they would have wanted that first goal. They've got it. Now they've got to keep going. One-point ball game. This time, Chalmers gets his hand on the football. Coming up again was Fraser. He goes over the top. Clayton kicked two goals in that second quarter. Came on, was outstanding. Comes forward. Harvey should take him. He does as he kicks it. Great effort there by Anthony Harvey. Fleming goes to the ground. The Magpies Army call for holding the ball over the top is McCormack. Players just throwing themselves over the top of the football. Well, that's a sensational bit of play there, isn't it? Some great tackling. Clayton committing himself, nearly knocking himself out. Harvey running him down. Desperate stuff by Norwood. It's going to be an excellent third quarter. Gerbery down to Davey. Davey comes around, does the big arc, then goes out wide. A dangerous kick. 50-50 contest out here wide. Ops, Tregenza. Ops, Tregenza. Ops out front. Will he get to it again? Tregenza comes back in again. There's support there by Cotton. It looked like Morgan as well. As we see Cunningham coming off. Had a pretty quiet first half. Only had the seven possessions and Crouch coming on. It was so good, as you mentioned before, last week coming on that second half. Very important to him, the midfield. Davey. Should go back with this. Coming across is Fleming once again. He's pushed off the football there. Looked like Warrior. O'Loughlin it was, in fact. Evans pads the ball towards Bamford. Back to O'Loughlin. Chips the ball up high. Brown should go with this. He does. Good sport from, from behind there by James. Again through Wade. He just punches the ball back to where it came from. Oh, the push from O'Loughlin. The umpire's missed it. Going back is Pitt. Pitt needs to go over the top. He does that. And finds Ops. Ops quickly down the line the movement coming out by cotton will be taken by mad dog morgan throws the ball out in front the umpire's called hold holding the football no he's called holding the man jared cotton comes up with a free kick I've seen that a couple of times eugene warrior's done it once or twice just intelligent football not actually taking the ball keeping it in front danny morgan did as much as he could do it was sold pretty well too i guess that's half the battle Jared Cotton, who has played in two losing grand finals with Central District, goes towards half forward. Bowman thumps it away from Lees. What a contest that's been. A real tough encounter. Figert and Bassett. Figert got the handball clear. Fraser punches it forward into space. Kemp held his line pretty well. Morgan came hard and tough at it, almost headbutted it. Well, a one point ball game, Tim, as you'd expect, the pressure is really high and the players are charging at it every contest like their life depended on it. Chikens has been leg. And the one percenters that are involved in some of this pack work has just been really fantastic. Danny Morgan's going to have to come off with a blood rule. I think you called it when he just threw himself into that last pack. He's just banged his nose up. Got himself a little scratch there. But uh, the commitment on both sides, the way they're hitting these 50-50 contests has been a real pleasure to watch. Unbelievable. Five and a half minutes gone, one point ball game in the 99 grand final. Port Adelaide with the red hot favourites. As Carter comes back on, the best player for them, uh, Tim, in last year's finals, along with David Brown, they won the yeah. award equally at the club. And he spent a bit of time in the grand final on the bench. I don't think anybody at Port Adelaide expected this game to be easy, and it certainly turned out that way. Jared Bolton, been a revelation this year, made the Port Power list on just sheer tenacity, and it's a mark, it's Evans. He's got it 30 metres out directly in front and a chance to put, put Port Adelaide back in front. It'll be the first time for quite a while because Nord have really taken the challenge up at this grand final. And some excellent work there. Chikunza gave off to Poulton who just ran around two or three players a bit too easily. Got the long ball in and Evans took a great catch. Must finish though. You've got to ask the question, don't you? How often would... Uh the Magpies go into a grand final and in fact be red hot favourites for the flag with a goal kicker who's kicked 35 for the year beating their leading goal kicker and he's missed off to the right. He's not going to add to it is he? 
Scores are now locked away. Six and a half minutes into the third quarter. The tension mounts. Well, you couldn't have written a better script, could you, Mark? No, you couldn't have, David. This is what we've come to expect between these old rivals throughout the last century. Up towards Uber, he's taking on my two players there, Paul and also Chalmers. Kemp takes it. Paul goes over the top. Coming out hard was Cotton. It goes over the back there. Running on hard, 31. It's Scotty Bassett. Comes in board. Gives the handball across back to Kemp. Kemp heads towards Pasco. One-on-one. Tough contest. Warrior couldn't get his hands on the football. It's an interception there. Coming back to Northeast. Northeast, the usual, just throw the ball in the boot. Happens to find a player. He always does. Don't know how he does it, but he does. Back to Bamford. Bamford has a little bit of grace there to be able to keep his feet and gets around to play. Great kick. The leading Binky. Byron Binky. He's got a player in the goal square. He goes in that direction, going back hard as McCormack, but the mark's taken by Lachlan. Could not miss this kick. Oh, he could. Could not. Binky intelligent. He slipped over, but he knew he had to get it in quickly. Again, some great work done up the field by Northeast and Carr. This, this is defence. This is not a gimme by any stretch. Oh, it certainly it's isn't. A gimme. He's a young fella. Seven and a half metres out. And he puts it through. <laughs> what were you too worried about? It's a goal. It's O'Loughlin. I think it's his first. It is. The Magpies, well, they now move out to a six-point lead. Well, some excellent work, as I said, in the midfield there. Binky got up quickly, slipped, but knew he had to go long as O'Loughlin was making the ground. And in the end, that was intelligent football. Six points, the difference in favour of Port Adelaide. They trailed midway through the second term by 20 points. And look at the turnaround in this match. Yerbury thumps it down. Lees follows it up. Brown to Waite, who's now merging as a potent force towards full forward. He goes and McCormick drops back. Played in the reserves grand final last year. And did well. There's a push. But the advantage allowed to flow. Fair enough. Brown got it from Waite. Playing wide. Evans deep at in the flank. Cotton goes around the corner and Brownie, the skipper, just steadies things down. Drifts it inboard. Chalmers. Now he could almost turn and kick for goal, this big fellow. He is the most prodigious kick. Just wonder whether some grant, some gridiron clubs are not looking at him. O'Loughlin was in the front uh, position. Couldn't take the mark. Clayton manhandled play on, said the umpire. O'Loughlin did very well, brings it back in board. Pull the game with quick hands, got it out. Here comes the red legs in defence, and oh, Fraser almost cut it off. In fact, he did. He gained a point for his side. An excellent effort by O'Loughlin, man. He just kept the ball alive. And once he got it back in board, Pull then, you know, with his hands, almost created another goal. Fleming just rubs the left hamstring. Looks for his options out of defence. He's got Davy in short. He goes there. He could go over the top to Tyson. He decides not to. He goes a bit wider and longer. The back is crouched. Good mark by Dragenza. Umpire calls play on. Bit unlucky there, Simon Dragenza. Back to Tyson. Tyson goes over the top. Nord have got support. They're running in numbers again. They won't give up. Goes up. Carter misses the mark. He should have taken. Back to James. Back to Bassett. Bassett from 55. Unleashes with a big one towards Pasco. Pasco's up to the ball's gone over the line, I think it has. So behind to the Red Legs. They move on to 9-7, 61, a six point deficit for the Magpies on 10-7-67. Brown's made some space out wide here, but uh, North East and Pasco one-on-one -on -one contests have been very, very good to watch today. Yes, you would have thought it was a like, there's a push. Well, Clown said the umpire, Carter gave a little nudge on Bowman, Bowman's not happy. The ball flicks forward, into space goes Fraser. Cut off uh, by Todd Davey, the former Woodville West Torrens lad. The umpires have let things go today, but they have missed a couple of, uh, I suppose, pushes in the back in the last couple of contests. Carter comes off. Morgan back on. And pull in the ruck. Well, the players just stopped there. The ball sat inside the line. Wake didn't Good stop. Sack. He just kept coming on Davey. Wrapped him up and threw him away. Port Adelaide are taking on a different look. And Waite's leading the charge. Well, his attack on the ball's been fantastic today. And well, his David, job on Tyson as well. Yeah, Davey was very slow to come out after half-time. Maybe possible. I saw the doctor come out there with him, so maybe carrying something into this game. 
Comes across for Bamford to Brown. He's been exciting in this third quarter. Oh, Great vision. vision. Very Great clever. skills. Clever. Under extreme pressure. Very clever. This will be a captain's goal. That was vision at its best. And Brown, he just did. He's had 24 touches already. That's on his little right foot as well, mind you. He's just such an experienced campaigner in finals and has always played well in finals. He's just such a tough little nut. Well, when Lachlan kicked the last goal, he was only seven metres out. He's a bit further this time. He'd be about 30, but he's directly in front. And Lachlan. Very controlled with the kick. That. Maybe just stabbed at it. He's pushed it to the left. They were behind to the Magpies. 68, play 61. We'll play 12 and a half minutes into this third quarter. Well, it was an opportunity there for Ricky A. Lachlan to really put some doubt in the Nord players' minds, and he didn't nail it. And you've got to do it in finals. Neil penetrating, kicks a long one, but cool. Gee, they can't let this big fellow retire, can they? He's announced that he wants to. His body says enough, but give him a rest over the summer and let him go on. He's been terrific. Loose ball, Bamford left, boot, snap, and a point. And Port Adelaide now peppering the goals, and it's looking dangerous. Yeah, David, just from down here, it'd probably be time to get Roger James back onto around the ball. Maybe Adam Crouch move back up onto that forward line because uh, David Brown is just getting too much of it at the moment. Good call, Michael. Great call. Roger James outstanding in the second term. And I'm surprised that he's not around the footy. And Michael also, I see Scotty Doreen just warming up for his first run of the afternoon. Yes, he's pretty keen to get out there. We're just trying to pick up the player that's coming off. We'll let you know. Tyson, half-back, heads towards centre-half forward. James is back there. Really controlled that. Lee's out wide. A good little slap on there from Figert. Found Lee's. Lee's comes out wide. One-on-one -on -one duty here. Oh, the bounce favours Bamford. There's the football as it bounced to hit the dirt, comes across the crash. Crash couldn't make that extra yard. Magpies again, they've just got numbers in this third quarter around the football. Great handle over the top of the kick. Watch out. There's Chalmers. Oh, Pirouetta just in time. was just about to be cleaned up. Going back as Mad Dog Morgan. Morgan working hard in defence, releases Northeast, who in turn has Bolton presenting himself on the leg. Now he seems to have the job on Harvey. Uh, we might watch for that, Tim. Fraser. I reckon Harvey's running freely. Well, it's interesting, Polton grabbed you for a moment, but uh, just watch that for us. Big fly, Fleming from behind, spoils. Pitt mops up, uh, gets claimed by Poole. The handball came away, intercepted by Bamford. Now Brown, he's already kicked a couple. He wants to go on his left, but he handballs inboard. It was Binky the target. The big full forward was mowing it down. Couldn't quite get there. Obs dives on top. We are 14 and a half minutes into the third quarter. It's a seven-point ball game. A classic grand final, the last of the 1900s. <laughs> I like the way you called that, David. Well, it's a difficult one, isn't it? It's not the last of the millennium, particularly. I agree with you. I agree you know, with you. Uh, there's real... The blood rule here with Obst. We just saw Davey come off the ground for Doreen. Now Obst will come off with the blood rule. Davey yeah. may have to go back on. Yeah, Timmy, I'd be surprised if Davey does go back on because I don't think he's, uh, he's all well. We saw him a couple of times not go... Uh, 100% at the ball, very slow, and there's a trainer just wiping his face. I wouldn't be surprised if Davey has taken a knock that I haven't picked up. So Damien Obst and Davey off. Cunningham comes back on. Nails, and you'd expect a lift from Cunningham. Yes, you would expect a pretty ordinary first half of football in his regards, I would say. You know, only in seven possessions, just not enough. Come grand final day, they need him, the Trigenza. Good hands, they've just got numbers, Evans just pushes brute strength, trying to get away from it. Nord trying hard in there, Dragenz a little chip kick over the top. Couldn't quite control it with Crouch, quite happy just to see that ball out over the line. We see there, Nord playing off, just a bit of cotton wool up the nose to stop that bleeding. Just too many handles in that piece of play then. Yuvery thumbs it down, O'Loughlin roves it. For all their attacking, they've got to put it on the board, Port Adelaide. They're only eight points in front because Norwood will just keep running. They've done it in all the other finals, and they really are a dangerous unit. Fleming tried to get through, does so, gets the handball away, only as far as Morgan. He's 48 out, bustled off the ball. Oh, oh stolen by Waite. He's the man of the quarter, but he'll miss this one. Well, it was a good effort, though, wasn't it? Very good effort in the end. Danny Morgan dodged himself and spilt the ball. 
but uh, just Danny Morgan got a hand in there just to retard that handball and an excellent effort by White to sneak in. Ian Mogwich just gave us a stat mark. 60 possessions this term to Port Adelaide, 30 to Norwood. Yes, they just control the football. Norwood are chasing jumpers. They can't let it happen. The Trugenza again, they're just not hitting it as hard as they were in that first half of football, the Red Leagues. They're letting the Magpies dictate terms. And the Magpies, to their credit, they're in front by nine points. But, Tim, they could, could have been further. Could have been out to 20, 24 points by now. Yeah, they just need to nail a few of these thrusts to really put it beyond doubt. But Nord will just keep going. That's the thing with them. We'll have these hard matches in the lead-up to this grand final taking their toll on the Red Legs. They're starting to look a little bit tired, but Crouch takes a safe mark. Half back. Goes back quickly. Blows a bit of air out of those cheeks. He's still got plenty in him. He's a young player, and he could really see the game out. Bowman again, one-on-one -on -one with Lees. Lees really has dominated that. Chalmers takes another good mark. Cunningham from behind is having a day you'd like to forget. Figgett, just maybe one too much a step there just went a bit too far couldn't control the kick coming back at Fleming gives it across the crouch again we've got players out wide and Clemens Clemens can go down the field there's five red legs you heard Tim Jennifer oh, call give it give, give it, give it. it now lad what's he doing he wants to run him all the way up he does now and then puts a bit of pressure under his kick heads up towards Pasco Magpies take this mark which they should they don't comes back again 21 is kept around his body kicks the ball out of bounds on the floor well we used to have a rule, as soon as you get in defence and there's everybody up the ground, you just get it yeah. up there as quickly as possible so that you can get the ball forward. Uh, having those bounces, I mean, it looks good, but the actual percentage play is to get it up to your next teammate so that you can have a forward thrust with no pressure. Good comment, Tim Ginevert. As Poulton takes the ball for Port Adelaide deep in the back pocket. We're almost 19 minutes into the third term. It's a high ball to half back. Oh, well done. Standing underneath that Downsborough. He's had to recover from a, an Achilles strain to take his place in the side. What a journeyman he's been from West Perth to West Coast, to Port to the Crows, to Norwood. It's a high one towards full forward. Pasco couldn't get there. Poulton came crashing out over the top of it. Morgan and Carr leaves and Eugene oh! Warrior. He's kicking. Eugene's got that one. That is a big one. Unexpected and a bolt out of the blue. Eugene Warrior just nonchalant. He pops it through for his second goal. That is the biggest goal you'll see in a grand final. Well, that's kept Nord alive in this contest. That could be the spark that gets him back going. Port Adelaide just had several attacks at goal, didn't nail it. You just see the guys here in defence not taking the ball over the line. You see, even Lees' effort was just a bit half casual, thinking that, no, he can't do anything with this. But when Eugene worries around goals, anything can happen. Oh, we talk about marks of the year at halftime. That was goal of the year from Eugene Warrior. Magpies, I'll go forward again. The tackle needs to be put on. It was, it was late. Comes from Crickenza back again. Looks like Ob's running through the field. Nord players out front. Take him on. He does that and drops the football to the ground. Coming up with Evans. Cross to Beaky. Beaky's tackle. Back to O'Loughlin. O'Loughlin will go alone. He doesn't. He's got out wide. It's Clayton. He's kicked two. Lines up for his serves. The breeze brought it back. I don't think it has. It's another behind. So 71 now plays 67. We've got a four-point ball game. Well, he's kept it alive, Eugene Warrior. It was just Port Adelaide making the thrust but not getting the score on the board. And that's what can happen. Just one forward thrust by Nord to goal. Just great deeds in grand finals can turn games, and maybe Warrior is able to do that for the Red Legs. They were looking like they were fading. Port Adelaide explodes through Fraser deep into the pocket. Chalmers the target. Brown in support. Gives it to the skipper over his head. He missed the target. It was disappointing. Crouch was good in the contest. Brown came over the top and wrapped him up and forced a bounce. We are 21 minutes into the third term. Four-point ball game. Pressure rising. And the fans, I think, sitting on the edge of their seats. Well, it's exactly what we wanted to see, I suppose, in a grand final. Just, uh, uh, no, Norwood are always going to give a contest. And they've been very competitive today and really taken it up. They've led the game for most of the day. I can't understand why you wouldn't want to be here this afternoon with them this in this contest. It has just been a fantastic game of football. James again goes high, the back flying, coming across his lead, Bowman. Bit quiet as receives the free kick on this occasion. Morgan a little bit too high. 
just trying to contain that football. Comes in from Bowman, heads up towards Pasco. The big frame was there. Good work, Northeast again. How did you do that, Tim? <laughs> yeah, he does it Could well. be skills coast next year, wouldn't it? Have to wait and see. They've hugged the boundary line. The ball still staying in. Now goes out over. So a great kick to touch there by Julian Wade. Seven, seven kicks in this quarter. Has had an outstanding third turn, Julian Wade. I think he is the man, really, along with Brown. Chalmers and Poole that really has ignited this Port Adelaide side. Kemp emerging of one as, as one of Norwood's best players, goes forward, but Poole, well, he's doing everything for his side today. Releases car in turn to Genza. Plenty of space in which to work, he loves this. He hasn't played a game for the Crows this year, but I don't think that'll worry him if he can win a flag with the Magpies today. Olongren wrapped up by Crouch and Great we'll work. Bounce. Great work by Crouch there. He, he understood that he had a play that he had to contain in O'Loughlin, but there was also Morgan out there in that contest. Also, Dragenza, the kicker, was going towards that contest. There was one on four. Great work there by Crouch. Stephen Williams, Mark, is rotating his uh, smaller running players, giving them a little rest and a little bit of time off the ground. Well, they're starting to blow their whistle a bit now, the men in white. Free kick goes towards Kemp. Kemp, who had, I think, 36 possessions last week in the preliminary final, up towards Bowman. The back is Portman, he throws the football out. Warrior again, that little stone poke forward. Gives a chance here now for Tyson. Tyson, back, around, just needs to set up. He does through James. Close your eyes, fellas, put this one down. No, you don't. We're going to support. He's made a mistake. That doesn't happen too often, especially out of Roger James's handbook. Well, you're right there, Mark Nally. I thought Tyson did everything correct then. He can't believe it himself. Got it back in the corridor and got it to, uh, well, probably the highest skilled blokes on the park. I guess uh, Tim Tyson's playing for a spot on the Crows roster. New coach. We'll be having a good look at him today. Yeah, I believe he's had enough to uh, definitely stay on the Crows list. He's had a good, reasonable year. Car to feed it on the 50 metre line. Over the top to pool. Gee, just think just how you rank him in terms of fourth best players. Tim Banford almost run down. Chips hole. Chips it wide to Lees. He might wait till a ball up or a out of bounds to ask it. Neil, manhandled. Here comes Evans. Turns it around the corner. A little too far. He's having a dirty day. It was never the kick. That was never the kick. Straighten your body and just punch a drop punt into that right post. That's the only way you're going to kick a goal in that pocket. Breeze comes across there. Always takes the ball from right to left. Three-point ball game inside the Magpies 50. Kick by Obbs is high, wide, and not that handsome because it's out of bounds on the full. So, fellas, this last quarter, it's all set. It is going to be sensational. Just, uh, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be good. It's the ball be brought back in here by McCormack. He goes out wide. It's a high kick again. Nord had the numbers here. Oh. Bit of voice. There wasn't one there. He ducked his head as the ball came in. High ball, Jarvis has to sit and takes the mark. Mistake again by Nord. That out of halfback flank has allowed the Magpies now to have another shot on goal. Well, Brett Chalmers is a normally a very good kick for goal. Probably close to any side that good. But Genza just, he's having a real good day out. And he just pumped that ball in, but uh, not one of Johnny Cunningham's finest moments. The three point margin could go out again to nine. He puts it on its way. They're happy behind the goal square. As the flag start waving, the Magpies army are cheering. That's Brett Chalmers. That's a goal, and that's his second. You just see the kick coming from McCormick here now. There had to be some voice. Oh, Cunningham. To give him confidence. Loud through to Tregenza, who's just pumped that ball in this turn, along with Waite on the other wing. It's an important duel for Port Adelaide, the wings. It's been a good duel so far. Chalmers. Is value for touches. Second goal. 77 to 68. Nine point ball game. Poole takes it out of the ruck. Fraser drives it to the true center forward section. O'Loughlin misses it. Scotty Doreen, who's now on the ground. The former Sydney Swan player drives it long towards the Red League forward line. Poole with pace. Was after it with pace. Thank you, Tim. Very good. Well, I guess uh, you've got to say that. 
Fugenza. Now he has got pace. A long ball, a log them two on one in the contest. McCormick hunted it out to Kemp. In turn, Clements back to Kemp, who is amassing plenty of possessions. Bowman, cream by pool, play on set the umpire. Fraser, now Morgan, now Tregenza. Gee, they're amassing possessions. It's make by unit, it's keepings off. McGuinness to Evans, and it was, well, it was a difficult one. But, oh, he plays on quickly. Chalmers, two goals in a minute. And hello, the Magpies. They're looking like they can do it. They are on fire. Well, that was just fantastic. Daryl Paul, well, you asked me where I'd rank him. I'd rank him number one. He just went into the centre of the ground, created the centre clearance, runs the ball down, gets there first, runs Lockie Bowman down, gives a handball off, creates the whole pattern of play. Tregenza just keeps driving and driving with possessions. This is a very good mark one-on-one -on -one with Fleming and Evans. And Evans, I thought, oh, a bit dangerous to play on, but in the end, he did it very well and very skillfully to get it to Chalmers, who ran into an open goal. They've got the momentum. Oh, Lord, just taking the foot off the pedal. Lows the Magpies have kicked two very valuable goals from time on period. Pull again, taken high. Oh, what a purple patch he's having in the last 10 minutes. The kick's not good. It's a favour of the Red Legs. Oh, who's coming across? Wait. Too high, the free kick given away. He's taken by McCormack. He needs to get the football quickly. He's got Fleming out wide. Wait just realises that. And balls the ball into the air. Just buys a bit of time. Very clever work, Julian White. McCormack, Bowman, Paulton, again, the back was cotton. Harvey, a little bit quieter this quarter. Just goes for his hamstring as well. He's had only had one possession, fellas, in this third quarter. It was dynamic in that second. Didn't look to be moving all that freely to me. I tried to uh, point that out mm. to you, David. And yeah, you did. It's not, you know, a lot of their players have done particularly well to come up for the contest today, but... In the end, there's still a quarter of football to go, and they must keep running. Well, they've got to stay in touch here. That's the important thing for the Red Legs, is McCormick drives it back, Warrior roves it, Bassett came in for a big fly. James claimed by Obst and Morgan. It just seems to be, Tim, there's a two-on-one in every contest uh, at the moment. Port Adelaide really have lifted a gear. Extremely desperate with their tackling. Defence a couple of times have let it go through their hands and get to the back. They wouldn't be happy with that. Stephen Williams. But they are very quick to recover with it. Heads down, Mark, as uh, he likes to get to the boundary line pretty quickly. You don't want to miss anything that you might be able to blast somebody for. <laughs> well, a 15-point ball game favours the Magpies this stage of the quarter, Tim. It really was maybe not the Premiership quarter. The Magpies had their chances, but Nord is still in this game. Oh, it's mainly through that bloke. Who just uh, created a goal out of nothing, which kept them alive. And Port Adelaide were doing a lot of attacking, but not really nailing the goal. So Port Adelaide pleased with that quarter, but not overwrapped because they probably could have made it a lot more difficult for Norwood. But uh, they're going to go in with a bit of momentum, kicking with uh, a, a slight breeze in this last quarter. They need the first two early goals, and that will certainly swing it in their favour. But Norwood just have to keep running, keep their heads high, and just keep creating something out of nothing. Well, three quarter time scores here indicate that the Magpies. They're 12 11 83. The Red Legs on 10 8 68. Sit back, put your feet up, and relax because you are watching the SNFL Grand Final exclusive to ABC Sport. Stay with us. I think you'll enjoy the final quarter as the Red Legs and Port Adelaide just fight this one out in a bruising encounter. Tim, uh, it really is a tough game of football, and Port Adelaide, that term, uh, turned a 7-point half-time deficit into a 15-point three-quarter time lead. I've been very impressed, as I said in the call, that uh, the 50-50 contest by both sides have been exceptional, and uh, you've seen a lot of blokes come up for the blood rule, mainly because they've all been crashing in very, very hard. I'm very impressed with both sides, their commitment. Norwood are running on courage at the moment, and basically they've got a lot of players I can see that just aren't quite 100% fit who are just keeping their heads up and just keep them running. And they've got to do that in this last term if they're going to make an impact. But really, the scene is set at this th third quarter for Port Adelaide to kick the first couple of goals and probably uh, run home the favourite 
in this grand final. Well, what about uh, what is it about Port Adelaide in third quarters? As David Brown opened up with that goal in the opening few seconds of the quarter, it was evident that uh, they just lifted a cog. Three and four contests. Nord are making them earn everything, as Port are making Nord. And you just see, sometimes they've overused the footy a couple of times, but when it gets to blokes like David Brown, their skill level is exceptional. They'll finish off every time, and Brown and Chalmers and Roger James for Norwood, they do it every time. They're very skillful players. Brian Binky hasn't had a big day, to be fair. No, he hasn't, but uh, I don't think the foot injury's probably played a lot in that. He's uh, had a very good opponent. Uh, Robbie Neal started on him and did particularly well. And uh, look, they've got to rotate those men, and they've done particularly well. When uh, Binky came on, he got an opportunity to uh, create a goal, and he did. So it might not be your day, as Peter Rowe well, says, but it might be your moment. The, th the thought came to me. I thought, even though he hasn't had a big day, I thought uh, he was pretty clever, Binky to get this ball on to uh, Ologdon to create the goal. He was very quick to get up, slipped because he knew the urgency. Got it long in the end with an excellent kick and O'Loughlin took the mark and finished off. And it was not an easy kick, uh, regardless of what Mark Naley said. It was not just a gimme. You still have to nail him and grand final nerves sometimes can take over, but uh, on that occasion, Ricky was OK. Now, we were going to have a three-quarter time package for our viewers for the goals of the year, but I think we've thrown them straight out the door. <laughs> I think we've got a winner. Eugene Warrior's goal in this third quarter. I don't know you'll see a better one. Oh, look at this. <laughs> Just gets through, creates something out of nothing, and that really did keep Norwood in the contest then. Even Brian Lees was just happy to see that ball over the line, and he just toe-poked it, and, well, whether he was aiming or not, Eugene got another one. That was the main thing. I think they're better than the ones we had, so I think uh, we'll go with that as the goal of the year, Tim, unless you uh, want to disagree. No, I'm happy. I'm happy with that one. Fair enough. What about uh, Chalmers? Uh, two goals in the last two minutes uh, of the quarter really has set up a probable Port Adelaide victory. Well, isn't it good that you can put Daryl Paul into the ruck, who will create centre breaks, and you can put this bloke up forward who will take marks and kick goals. So you've really got to be thankful that uh, you can have those blessings, and uh, that's what Port Adelaide have got. All right, it's now time to go down to... Uh... No, we can't go down to Michael Parsons. He's not ready. He's a slow old fellow, but... Uh... He's actually blowing the siren. He's got a lot of jobs to do today. <laughs> Tim, what would uh, Peter Rode be saying to his team at three-quarter time? They could still win this. Basically, boys, it's a grand final, and uh, you don't play grand finals to lose them. You just keep your heads up, keep running. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. Miracles can occur. you just got to keep that ball going into the forward 50. Pasco's up there. He can still do some damage. There's a lot of, lot of guys still alive that can create something. I just think... Oh, it's time to go down to Michael and the Nord huddle. Do it. Quick, long and direct. Quick, long and direct. Win the footy. Use the ball properly, OK? Comes back to basics. Nothing's changed over four weeks. Nothing's changed today. Win the ball. Use it quick, long and direct. Quickly. Yes, Peter Rode getting a little bit excited. Explain to his players they've been in this position for the last three weeks. It's nothing new. Just have belief in the system, win the ball and use it, and they can still get away with the, uh, the uh, victory cup at the end of the game. Mark Williams, on the other hand, Stephen Williams, I should say, on the other hand, finished the job off. Nothing is enough for Port Adelaide was the basic message. Just continue to run, continue to work hard. And one player that did have a lot of yap is somebody that I think has played a fantastic day to game today, and that's uh, Bamford. He really has done a job on Johnny Cunningham and supplied some run forward as well. But Stephen Williams, pretty happy, just looking forward to getting the job finished off. Thank you, uh, Michael, for that. As we go to the three-quarter time scoreboard here, it shows that uh, Norwood led by 13 points at quarter time, 7 points at half time, but they trail by 15 points at three quarter time. And perhaps just kicking the one goal to with the breeze in that term just sort of maybe showed that Norwood perhaps running out a little bit of legs and uh, Port Adelaide kicking four goals, six into it. Ten scoring shots. That they're fresh. Ten scoring shots that term to Port Adelaide. They didn't get a, uh, a good return, but uh, in the end, Chalmers has got three, Brown and Clayton two apiece. Tregenza, McGuinness, Bamford and Paul one each. And for Nord, James Pascoe, Bassett, Warrior with two each, and Kemp and Harvey with singles. And yet again, Mark Naley has been having a good look at the stats. Make something of that. Yes, yeah, a third quarter completely, or, or complete domination by the Magpies. We saw there up to half time with 73 uh, possessions apiece in that second quarter. Well, the third quarter fell, it's 104 possessions to the Magpies and only 58 to Nord. You come down, well, they dominated in the air again, 42 marks compared to 30. For the Red Legs, hit outs. Well, Nord, Jonathan Yerbrin also Downsborough still on top, 32 as compared to 19. Centre square breaks. Well, that's where the Magpies are doing it very, very well with 16 as compared to Nord's eight. And inside 50, well, it all happened in that third quarter for the Maggies, 42 compared to 34. And just quickly, individually, Browns had 26 up to three-quarter time. Bamford 25, and Big Daryl Paul, he's had uh, 20 
up to the stage of the game. And for the red legs, well, Kemp's had 25, and James has had 15, along with Harvey and Cotton. Thank you, Mark. Uh, as we go down to Michael Parsons. Yes, thanks, boys. With me, the chairman of Port Adelaide Selectors, Alan Gill. Alan, what are you looking for in this last quarter? Oh, much of the same, I think. Mike, um, we, we started to win the ball around the closing contest there, which is what we've set out to do. I think it was five zip out of the middle then, so yeah, we're controlling the footy now. That's what we want to do for this next 30 minutes. And Chalmers going to stay at full forward? Yeah, he'll stay there for a while. Paulie's doing a pretty good job on the ball, so he'll stay there and hopefully grab a couple up there. Thanks, Alan. Thanks, Alan. Thank you, Michael. Good crowd uh, enjoying this match. Stay with us for the final quarter of the 1999 SANFL Grand Final. It's a 15-point ball game, but the Redlegs will fight it out. I think you'll enjoy it as Wayne Jackson looks on. I'm sure he'd be enjoying the contest. Mark Williams is in the crowd also, looking on as his brother coaches Port Adelaide. And Foss and Bonnie Williams, Stephen's mum and dad, are also in the crowd enjoying this moment. But they're not home yet. As Derek Woodcock puts the ball down for the final quarter, your commentator is Mark Naley. 12-11-83, 10-8-68. Umpire thumps the football down. Daryl Paul and Yerbury. Paul takes it. Great effort again by Daryl Paul to Bamford. Bamford up forward. Come out hard as Evan. Well, this is the exact start that they would like. It's about time Paul Evans nailed one of these goals too. He's done some real good things late in this game and now he has to kick a goal. Daryl Paul once again providing the centre break. Feeding off to Bamford who's been good all day. Pooley with 17 handballs and Bamford with 17 kicks. Evans, he's kicked two behinds as you saw. That's his third. Oh, the disgust on his face. Well, if you he's want to put a game again. away, you've got to nail those, Mark. Definitely. And that would be very disappointing, Paul. Done some good things, some good marks, but you must finish. Neil to the far side. Pitt was the target. And G's had his hands full and... Uh, was that touch before it went over? Yes, said the umpire. As we go down to Michael Parsons in the port bench. Yes, and you can see the guys that uh, are in reserve for this last quarter in Mark Clayton, Stephen Carter and big Damien Brown. Yerbury got the ball down. And the Red Legs just need somebody at centre-half for him to take a mark for them. Lees has been outstanding, hasn't he? Centre-half back. He just nullifies his opponent so that they haven't touched the ball and don't know what it looked like and then he gets touches himself now how do you pick the Jack Odie medal this guy's got to be featuring it's not one yet there's still a quarter football to go Chalmers from behind launches himself Doreen got taken high the umpire's blown the whistle that's a free kick now Port Adelaide will just scrape and scrap and slow the game down Norwood need to break open and explode they need to get some emotion behind them if they're going to have any chance of winning this one. Oh, great mark taken, Brosnan. Front of the pack, in front of Downsborough. Polton. Uh, Polton, sorry. It's two good That's grabs right. in a row, though. Polton. He's done exactly what you've uh, Polton, asked of him. Great effort. Brosnan doesn't take a similar mark. No. Polton. Thank you, Tim. That's all right. Polton goes out wide with a kick back there. Clements. A newly shaved here. They might be in a bit of trouble here. McCormack takes the mark. Oh, Chalmers is Chalmers hurt. hurt. McCormack comes out wide. Nord had the numbers again. Crouch just dropped the ball over the top now to Tyson. The running Tyson. Oh, Mr. Eber just gets in the way. The runner for the Magpies. Just put a little bit of pressure on Tyson's grab. Tyson gets around. Heads towards centre half forward. Who's there? Got the backers. Pasco. He needs a player running by. Has James. This time, what can he do? It'll bounce once. And just deviates slightly as he holds his head. Another behind to the Red Licks. They needed a goal. And it's not going your way. Things like that happen. Roger James, an exceptional finisher. Nailed a couple of brilliant goals in the first half. And very unlucky there. It's got a bad bounce, didn't it? Uh, took a leg break. It needed an off break. Everybody missed that one. Oh, great thump. Great vision. Downsborough thumps it wide. Cotton released on the outer wing with space he had warrior short ignores him takes the long option but who is the long option no one there oh thank you Tim Paul well he's been uh, pretty tough today too creates a little bit of space plays on points it out on the left foot to uh, Julian Waite gee I liked his third quarter talk about a fellow who really committed himself bodily for the cause over the top to Obst 
as we go down to Michael and the Norwood bench. Yes, they're going, not too sure or how many fit guys are sitting on the Norwood bench, but Todd Davey, John Cunningham and Lockie Bowman, who has battled hard at centre-half forward, but well beaten by Brian Lees, I would have thought. Ball's chipped out, McGuinness looking to give the handball, finally finds Paul, number 18 comes up for Daryl Paul, and he's hit Banford, who has his 18th kick. Oh, Mark nearly taken there by Pitt. Couldn't quite get that extra centimetre to take that ball before it hit the ground. So ball be thrown in. Magpie's forward pocket. It is. It's done. The soccer there. Umpire's missed it. Arms go to the air. Chalmers pleads with him. At the bottom is Bamford. With him is Obbs. The man holding the football, getting up very slowly there. Looks like McCormack. What odds do you give the Red Legs of getting up, Mark? It's pretty tough. They're kicking into the breeze. But as we saw, the Magpies did it in that third quarter. Also the first quarter. So the game is a long way from being over. Oh, Tregenza may have said this for a kick he has. It's well off the football. Now it's coming downfield where the ball bounced. That's a new rule for me. I don't know that I've ever seen that one either. Maybe that's with the penalty, I don't know. I'm making it up, no? No. For again, so that's a great Oh, yeah. what a leg! Oh. Well, he's running on confidence, Simon Dragenza, when he does things like that. 20 possessions, two goals. He's had a fantastic game. I was very concerned with the centre line, Jewel, that Nord are very strong there. And White did a job on Tyson. Tregenza's beat Nobs, and in the middle, well, take your pick of Brown and Nobs and all the rest of them have done their job in there. Now that uh, free kick was right too, by the way, because he was tripped, uh, but uh, if they'd have brought him right back out there, they would have penalised the side, because it's where the ball was. As Morgan goes forward, McCormick, technical up by decision. That one, we have to think about that. Fleming, over the top of it, bustled out of the contest. Tyson brings it back in board to Crouch. Well, wasn't he good last week, but he was sat on the interchange bench for the first half of this one. Fegan just bulldozed over the top of Bassett, then drives the ball to eight. He's emerging as one of Port Adelaide's best players, no question. And now Evans is getting into the contest. He's drifted out to sit out forward. Played for the 25-metre penalty, didn't get it. Six and a half minutes into the final term. 90 plays uh, 69 at the back door. Pitt again, over the top of the handball. Clements mops up. Needs a little support, has time for a bounce. He can explode away from defence. Where's the target? He needs to go to the boundary line. It's his only option. Or he can go over the top of the handball. Where's the support? There's nothing coming at him. Gee, you just can't believe that from Norwood's viewpoint. Oh, and Polton. Well Polton marks three in four minutes. Four. Four times in four minutes he repels the Red Legs and delivers it up to McGuinness, who dropped the mark. He should have taken it. It was almost a sitter. McCormick wraps him up and forces a bounce. Seven minutes in, take over Mark Naley as Port Adelaide power home. Well, McCormick back there again to stop McGuinness. He would have to be, I think, the best player this afternoon, or the most consistent out there this afternoon for the Red Legs. Yerbury, Darrell Poole again, give the handball he does again. That's number 20, I think. Comes up Brown, going backwards pit on Chalmers, takes a good mark. Might be time to get Chalmers off. He's uh, just struggling to run now. He's limping. He's done his job. He's done superb. Give Damien Brown a run. And Paul, outstanding. It goes to Neil. He's got nobody out there again. He just heads it over, over the top. This is going to favour the Magpies because Carr will get there first. As he made the line, I think he has. Carr just quite happy to see it over. Realising now, well, we're 21 points up. We're eight minutes into this last quarter. The signs are there for a Magpies to win their 36th grand final. Roger James keeps fighting at it. Good piece of work there. Down again, coming through. Harvey overruns it. Just starting to tire. Yeah, that was just tired, wasn't it? Because he's so good front and centre. He was in the right spot again. Just a bit of weariness, wasn't it, Mark? Definitely was. Fleming at the back again. He hasn't stopped trying all afternoon. He's been held here by Brett Chalmers. The advantage has played the pit. Now, where's the movement? They've stopped running the red legs to Yerbury. Yerbury will be tackled. Gets around one, then gets the kick out up towards pit. He's taken as he's hit. As he's kicked, he's taken. So the free kick will be 
play downfield. And we'll go, looks like James it is. James goes wide. Plays is starting to run across the camp. He needs the ball to sit. He does. Great tackle by Carr. He's in there again for a second effort. Kemp just throws the ball onto the boot. Where are they? Bassett across the Warrior. Warrior lines up and kicks his third. He's kept them alive, hasn't he? Every time Port Adelaide looked like they might just sneak a bit of a break, Warrior pops up and just creates another goal. Didn't his dad play for Port Adelaide, Tip? Certainly did. Gee, what about mixed emotions there? As his son puts that one through, brings them back a little closer. And I think he was uh, quoted as saying that he might have to barrack for Norwood today. Just for the day. Just for the day. The Eugene Warrior with three goals keeps the Red Legs in the hut. They're 15 points down. Plenty of time for them to get up and win. What an improbable victory it would be. They were rank outsiders in this match, but what a gallant performance it's been. Poole has been outstanding. To wait high amongst Port Adelaide's best off his wing. To Doreen, who started on the interchange bench. To Kemp, who's probably Norwood's best when you think about it. And Warrior and Carr do battle again. Bassett's working hard. He'll feature amongst the Red Legs best. And a high ball towards Tyson. Caught underneath it. Couldn't quite get to the contest. Pasco just misjudged it. Northeast, the fullback of the day, drives it long and hard forward for Port Adelaide, where Clayton, just inside the line, is quite content to carry it across. Well, Port Adelaide have to keep charging forward. They have to just make sure that the momentum stays in their favour. Because Nord are just so good up forward, they'll always create a goal. Paul thumps the ball down again. We'll see James collect it. He's got players moving for him. James will come at it again. Working hard was Brown. Cross again, nil. The kick forward. Nord have the numbers. Who will get there first? Brian Lees. He goes with a soccer kick out wide. Working hard over the top is Doreen. He'll pick this up. He needs to steady. He hasn't got time. Comes in board. Again, Brian Lees is back there. Gives the handball back to Jared Poulton. Poulton just stabs it, goes wide towards Wade. Wade will be tackled, comes in board to Figgert. Figgert goes to the boundary line. Out wide was O'Loughlin, goes over the top to Lees. Lee realising the pressure was there, thumps it, but only as far as Kemp. Kemp to James. James comes inside to Tyson. Tyson needs support, he goes across to Ops. Ops dropped it, then gets to his feet. 35 metres out directly in front as he brought it back, I think he has. Nine We've points. got a nine-point ball game. Obst. That's his first. Well, Port Adelaide, you can just sense they took the foot off the pedal a little bit. And Nord, well, it's like the game against the Bays. They'll just keep running. They'll keep running. They've got opportunists that finish off well. And we see it again there. Some excellent work. They will not stop. Roger James just keeps creating. Well, listen keeps to the atmosphere. The listen, listen, to, to the... listen to the crowd. Oh, oh. Down goes the bounce. Yerbury wins it down. James, who's been important in this final term. Fraser upended by Downsborough. No penalty. It's a nine-point ball game. And who would have thought it as we go down to Michael on the boundary? And Peter Rowe can feel the momentum changing and he's played one of his final cards with Anthony oh, Harvey oh. coming off. Fleming. Fantastic pass. Anthony Harvey's come off uh, to make way for John Cunningham. Thank you, Michael, for that. Tyson did well underneath the contest. Oh, great work, Obst. Obst was good. Tregenza lumbers after him. They're spent, these fellows, but they are going on sheer courage and adrenaline. And what about this mark, Timmy? Damien Fleming's found some spring, and that's what momentum does. Just creates... The crowd have lifted. Yes. The red legs have lifted. Port Adelaide will need to show their medal. They've been the best this decade, but can the red legs find something? Warrior. Back to Doreen. Almost got through. Downsborough thumps it into space. Bamford dispossessed. Doreen through again. He needs Warrior, but no, he goes solo. Three points. Three points as Doreen gets it through the middle. It's a three-point ball game and momentum with the Red Legs. Oh, what an incredible change. There was plenty of time. Seven or eight minutes in, the foot was off the pedal. Nor created goals, but Doreen with what a plane because he's so good at finishing and look at this that's a great goal Nord are alive oh get the oxygen up here for David Mackay he's just about passed out I'm ready for a heart attack fellas I think he is I'm going to get on a summer fitness oh, program here we go 
87 plays 93 points. Again, Yerbury, he gets his hands the football. Darrell Pool takes the ball out of the air, goes to ground. Fraser over the top of it. Oh, we're 14 minutes into the last quarter, the 1999 grand final, the Red Legs and the Magpies. What a game of football we've witnessed here this afternoon. Hey, gee, wouldn't you hate to be one of those people who turned off at halftime? <laughs> Down again. This time, Brown, Duops, the Magpies will go forward. It's a wobbly kick. At the back is Pitt. Same down as Clayton. He kicked two in the second. He just pushes this one wide. So, with three point goes out to four points, the Red Legs will bring it in. Their players, well, Tim, I thought they were gone there about at the 10 minute mark. Well, this unfortunately, quarter. I think the Port Adelaide players did as well, and that's exactly what they sniff on. And then they've made a charge, got a goal. They're great finishers. They get inside 50, they, they nail the goal. Neil by himself, Pitt from fullback. Almost 15 minutes gone. We are two thirds of the way through this final term. Pitt goes directly down the, the ground. Yerbury was the target. Bamford claims it. But he's wrapped up, and umpire Kevin Chambers will come in and bounce. 39,135 the attendance. And I think it was 44,200 odd people who last saw them in 1997. And I reckon there'll be 39,000 very happy people. This one's been a classic. O'Loughlin thumps it forward. Bamford, hands and knees, hard at it. Clayton comes in a good second charge. Well done, Jared Cotton, over the top to Cunningham. Releases the ball on the left foot to James. But 60 metres ahead. What a final quarter he's played. He's out on the outer wing. Obbs, the 35-year-old, tries to run him down. He drills it in short. It bounces for Pascoe, releases Warrior. He's kicked three, make that four. Oh! Yes, out there in front. The Red Legs are in front. Eugene Warrior is his fourth, with his fourth goal, has put the Red Legs in front. Now we'll find out what the Magpies are made of because we know what the Red Legs are. They just keep coming. Oh, Eugene Warrior. He's done it so many times. Saw in the game against the Glenelg Football Club when he changed momentum. Kicked goals, created goals. He's done it again. He's just finishing beautifully today. Pascoe did well in the contest. They got a little gift to him. Roger James is just providing the thrust into the forward line with eight touches already. It's just amazing stuff. More to turn this right around on its head. Port Adelaide. I did it last year when Sturdy at the front, they hit back. I've got to do it again today because Nord will just keep coming. Yerbury's doing well in the centre. Cotton should take it. It's got players out wide. If he wishes to use it, he can't get there. He's sat upon there by Obst. I think Port Adelaide were actually content to see the game out rather than just keep the momentum going and dangerous against a side like Nord. How important is the next goal? The Red Legs will go out to a nine-point margin. The Magpies will get back in front. And Lachlan throws the ball out, pits there as well. He's got support with Tyson out wide. Tyson will go across, looks like Crouch. Very hard to pick these players up now. Crouch goes towards Downsbury, he's up there, but a great mark again. Danny Morgan, mad dog Morgan. Gets the ball moving quickly to Carr. Carr goes out wide to O'Loughlin. Crouch and O'Loughlin. O'Loughlin goes to ground again. Needs to stay on his feet at this stage of the game. Ah, oh, beautiful McCormick. football McCormick. by McCormack. Tyson, Tyson created the hole and he put down Clayton. Really hurt him. In board. Downsborough. Oh, player's been pushed. Warrior dodges and weaves. Still has time to get his handball out. Again, looks like James, because he brought the ball back as he's pushed as he kicks it. Out of bounds on the ball. And still plenty of time for both sides. Just a matter of who's going to keep their cool and do the correct oh, things at the correct roll. times. No. Almost 18 minutes gone, final term. 99 grand final. Two-point ball game. And the blood rule is blood. invoked Damn. as Morgan. The former Carlton and Essendon player who really has made a hard home for himself with the Magpies, the tough man. He's been a very good recruit, Tim. He's been excellent. He's very hard at the football, just keeps going in. He's going to have to come up for the blood room now, but Mark Williams recommended him to the club, and I don't think he's disappointed. Neither is Fraser. So the two fellows that Mark Williams handpicked for his brother Stephen have worked out pretty well. And McGuinness, who was handpicked from Glamell, has done a pretty good job for them this season as well. But it's right down to the wire. 18 and a half minutes into the final term. Minutes remaining in this match. And the flag up for grabs. It's how you'd want it. Northeast with seven premierships. 
against his name, striving for his eighth. Can he take one away today? Forward it goes, and Chalmers has come away from full forward, back into the ruck, giving the momentum to Bamford, who drills it through the middle. Big fly in the centre, no mark taken. Where's Daryl Poole? Well, he's running hard, but Pitt releases the ball and goes straight to the boundary line, and Norwood will reset their defence. Big statement, I know, but I reckon next goal wins it. Well, I have to agree with you. I think we all do, Tim. I it's a tight one. Yerbury thumps the ball forward once again, coming out hard as Clayton. He gives the handball across to Regenza. Good move inside and go over the top. He does that. The link needs to come from Waite. Waite will kick from 50. Puts it up high. He's got the distance. Has he the accuracy? Missed. He hasn't. It's a behind. I think you're a prophetic, Tim, because if that one goes through, that would have been the team lifter that uh, the Magpies needed. Yeah. It's a big kick. They have a good roost. Wouldn't have missed by much. Who's your Jack Odie medalist at this stage? Hard to pick. I'll well, forget that, David. This stage. Yeah, let's forget that. Game's still up for grabs. Brown, toe pokes it forward. Waite was the target. Cotton creamed. Now Pitt comes back and board. Gee, this fellow's cool. Cool as a cucumber, the policeman. Towards Kemp and Clayton. Eugene Warrior, who's been very slick and clever with four goals. Fraser gets away the handball to Carr, who goes over the up. top. It's stolen away. Doreen was very special in that contest. Cunningham, wide. Downsborough, bustled as he got the kick away. It was just enough, but Pascoe ran in a straight line. Flicks it out to Bassett, who turns it inboard. Downsborough, what can he do? One step and shoots for goal. James. Going to go right across the face of goal, where James and Poulton fight it out. James. He's going to play in the goal square. What's he done? He's put it in. Pascoe upended. Carr did very well. Bamford. This is desperate. Oh, and a clear from the Magpies. It's Clayton. Clayton comes out wide. The Red Legs have the numbers through Crouch. They've got obviously the ball just sits, comes in board, steadies the body up, then goes over the top. The mark's taken by McGuinness. He's come on for Mad Dog Morgan. McGuinness, the big long kick. Both players slip over. At the back is Brown, the captain. What can he do? He's back there. He goes one way, pit the other, and Pitt sees the ball out over the boundary line. What a grand final. This is one of the best we've seen this decade. That, that pit effort, Tim, was a grand final effort. Oh, it's amazing. There's only a point in it. Pitt was brilliant in that contest. Two to one. And he achieved it. Resets their defence. Yerbury and Brown. Now Bice calls play on as players scramble. Evans thumps it out. McGuinness couldn't quite get there. Cotton dragged off the contest. Play on said the umpire. Cotton did well. He just kept going instead of staging for the free kick. Pushes it out. Lees and Downsborough. Now Downsborough's given them a bit of a lift across half forward. He's got the fresh legs and he's forcing Brian Lees to run. Certainly is, isn't he? And... Uh... Been excellent since he's come on, but uh, what a contest we've got here. One point ball game, 22 minutes in. Mark, he couldn't tip a winner from here. Can't. Next goal. Next goal will win this game. I'm wondering whether we've got time. It was 22 minute mark, it's just ticked over. 92 plays, 93. Max Bash is down there. Mary Oti's alongside of him. Wife of former great Sturt coach and Jack Oti will present the Jack Oti medal here this afternoon. That's going to be a tough task. Do we have to come back next week to draw? <laughs> yes, we do. I think it is. It's only the other finals where they do play extra time. The grand final, they do play another game. The ball's thrown in. At the back was Chalmers. He thumps it over the top. In the ball, he's been outstanding this afternoon. Ducks the body, drops the shoulder, looks for the handle. He finally gives it across the weight. The Magpies will go inside 50 again. At the back is Neil. What can he do? Robbie Neal, he runs for it hard. He's got Obbs up forward. The kick comes towards Obbs. Tregenza's just running out of legs. Obbs keeps going with it. What can he do now? He just goes up forward. He's kicked it out of bounds on the ball. A bad mistake at this stage of the game. As Tregenza comes back in, the lead's good. And it hits the target in big Damien Brown. Well, the big fella's got one of the most important kicks he'll ever have in his life. He can draw the game, he can put him in front, or he can kick it out and <laughs> bounce on the full. Well, he knows what pressure's about, uh, Tim. He's played in a couple of grand finals with Bernie. So he's not been a bad recruit either. Brown. They might judge him on this kick, David. Well, it's a great moment in a football's career. This is a defining moment in his career. Puts it through, he's a hero. To wait and see. Good run-up, good approach, and a good kick.
Barrow, but he might have kicked it. No, oh, the scores are locked away. We're playing nearly 24 minutes into this last quarter. They're 93 apiece. Well, there is a defining moment. Brown kicks a point, locks it up, but he's there and he's fighting. Oh, the big Reichland hands on top of the head. Well, Tim, what could have been? Tim, you called. Next goal wins. Port Adelaide, since that call, have kicked two points. Yes. Well, I'll tell you what, 24 minutes in. I know I'm a spent fourth. I don't know about these blokes. Well, wouldn't it be great if we could be back here next week? Yerbury, fingertipper, couldn't take it. Pull on the ground, tries to release Brown. The umpires uh, wisely allowed play on to flow. As the players fight it out, uh, Cunningham comes in late. And uh, Andrew Ops says, Uppy, where's the whistle? Well, Jamie, there can't be that much time no, on. We've only had one goals. blood rule. We've yep. only seen four goals kicked by Norwood, one by the Magpies. I reckon we'd be lucky to go to 27 minutes at the maximum. It's 25, just about to tick over. So we've got time for either side to kick a point or a goal. There's still time on their side. The ball's down over the top charm as the Magpies go forward. The tackle was good on Banford. In there was Waite just waiting for the ball to spill out. Oh, what a game. Obvious teaching in the commentary box, fellas, but there's <laughs> 39,000 people out in the outer that are on the edge of their seats. This is fantastic football. Crouch throws it away to Obbs. Obbs up forward, McGuinness. The Magpies just need someone to snare it forward. Crouch does it hard, does the hard thing. Yerby tries to grab at it. Crouch again, head down, tail up with Paul in there as well. And Bamford. No player or size giving an inch. I must say, Mark, I'd be pretty happy to come back here next week. And I think Port Adelaide would too, by the way. With this one under their belt. And what a journey it would be for Norwood. Be very tough for them to come up again, but might just make Port Adelaide cherry right. So Norwood need to kill off Port Adelaide right here and now and take this flag without coming back next week. Well, you watch, can... you just got to watch that little time. It says fourth and it says 26.01.02 now. It's 93 apiece. Time is running out. <laughs> Chalmers in ruck. Yerbury dumps it down. Cunningham couldn't get away the kick. Fraser releases Paul in turn. Chalmers, that was very slick. Now Brown, what a good combination. Bamford lines up the goals. It's coming around. It's another point. But at least Port Adelaide are in front. And if the siren sounds now, they'd win. Well, he's got the ball moving now as quickly as he possibly can. He's got Pitt moving out wide. That's the direction it has to go. The back of trick ends up. Pitt will come into the contest. Couldn't take it. The ball favours the Magpies. Coming through hard there. Number three was Doreen. The Magpies through McGuinness. Torpedo punt. Outside of 50. Oh. Good night, Magpies. <laughs> what a goal by McGuinness. Oh. Seven points up. 26 minutes, 50. I think I said it. They did it last year when Sturdy at the front. They come back and won by nine points. I think they're going to do it again today. you just got to admire Nord's courage. The way they have played this last quarter has been brilliant. Paul again, though, just keeps feeding people. I think Paul Dado fans sense it. I think at the 27-minute mark of the final term, I think they reckon they're home, and I think they might be right. There's only minutes left. Stephen Williams feels the pressure. Will he take three premierships from four years as a coach? Seven points the margin. The Red Legs need the next goal, or they next need to go forward. That was a throw. But it goes into the Port Adelaide forward line. Dangerous times for Norwood. Port Adelaide are doing all the attacking. Fleming, key defender today, floats a high ball up just outside the line. You just feel the lifeblood flowing out of the Red Legs and Port Adelaide growing in stature. What's a fantastic game, though, and oh, you've got to take your hat off to the Red Legs, the way they just keep fighting it out. But Port Adelaide, down. I tell you what, they turned it around once again. 28-minute mark, I'm not predicting anything. Tregenza overran it. Neil fights hard, but the ball goes across the line. These players are dead on their feet. 28 and a half minutes played, seven points ball game, and Port Adelaide enjoyed the lead, Mark. Darryl Poole, the intimidator, the instigator. He's been out there today. He's terminated this Lord side the way he's gone about it. McCormack over the top of the football again. They haven't stopped trying the Red Leagues. The Magpies, well, time is ticking away. The Magpies, little army are out there as well. They're thumping the air. They can see themselves on the big screen here at Football Park. 
There is 20 players around this football. It isn't going anywhere as far as the Magpies are concerned. You every another touch. They hit head as they went through. That was Doreen. And also McCormack. It may be the Magpie player in Bamford. He gives the ball back to the umpire. Again, put down Newbury. Big Brown, Newbury. Players over the top. They get it to Ops. Ops. Back to Clayton. Now Clayton to Bamford. What can he do? Will he set it up? He heads it. Four Nord players. O'Loughlin nearly takes a spectacular grab over the top. Hitting the goalpost there is Neil. You see how desperate Neil was there and intelligent as well. He knew he didn't want to rush a point because if he rushes another point, then that's another score that Nord would have to get. So intelligent play by Robbie Neal there and geez, done well for a bloke that had to come up from a couple of injuries. You couldn't have asked for more in this contest. Pitt drives it wide. Clements, Evans go hard at it. Cotton been handles forward. He's been very good this turn. Ops has been good in the clinches. Yes. Will he play on Tim? This will uh, just about see him out. And Wade on the left foot can finish it off but this one's a point. I think that might be just enough. 29, almost 30 minutes gone. White gets a point. He'll feature high amongst Port Adelaide's best. No question about that. And Port Adelaide will go on to take their 36th flag, if you don't mind. What an imposing record that is. Let's talk about that afterwards, David. Let's keep with this play. It's just been a fantastic grand final. Clements back into the forward line. Bassett going back with the flight was Carr. He's been good this afternoon. He hits the ground running. Great balance by Tommy Carr. Comes out with Vigenza. Ops and Dragenza, plenty of pushing and shoving as we hear the final siren, the 1999 grand final, the Magpies, they've won it by eight points. Well, Tim, you can bask in the moment. That was an unbelievable game of football played by two competitive sides. And in the finish, Port Adelaide just got home. Well, in the last 20 years, we saw 1980. Port Adelaide just get up. 1984, Norwood come from fifth, win by nine points. 97, Norwood two good. Massive winners. And today, eight point victors, Port Adelaide. respect to Norwood, uh, the way they come back, you know, after all those hard finals, that's one of the great ones. Uh, and what do you, who do you contribute most of it to? Uh, I thought Paulie was fantastic, you know, his work, just uh, unbelievable. Uh, what more can I say? Okay, thanks, Steve. Congratulations, Stephen Williams, and I think he might have tipped it to Tim. Daryl Paul certainly was my best, oh, but it was a very difficult job. There could have been four or five players. Look, I know we... It's all Port Adelaide at the moment, and gee, they deserve it, and they've been brilliant all year. And Daryl Paul, he'd have to be the Jack Odie medalist and best on. David Brown, an, an absolute superb performance. Because you remember, he missed the second semi, so he hasn't really played for, you know, five or six weeks. So that was brilliant. There's so many good performances on a grand final day. You look at Norwood as well. What about Roger James, the way he kept them alive? What about Jared Cotton's last quarter? Just kept thriving, Benny. trying to get the ball forward. Eugene Warrior with the Kemp. man that just kept them alive. Benny Kemp and all all the final series so you look at these guys here they know they've won something because Norwood have made them absolutely earn every kick and every point of that victory Brian, all North East eight yep. premierships that's an unbelievable record and of course Stephen Williams now three uh, flags in four years as coach oh he's outstanding let's just really blow his bags at the moment he has just been outstanding come in Four grand finals for three premierships. Just an outstanding performance as coach and just thrives for nothing less than the best. Well, the Nord plays, you see the Nord players there, they are dejected. They know what it feels like to lose grand finals. They know what it feels like to win grand finals. But look at the elation there, the Magpies. What a game of football. You just could not ask for a better game. 
between these two sides who really have dominated the competition for the last hundred years. Well, Port Adelaide were on top all year except for rounds 16 and 17 when Norwood were on top. And if you don't mind, Norwood were on the bottom after round three. So it's been a real roller coaster year for the Red Legs, but an unbelievably consistent year. Stephen, uh, and there's Stephen Williams' brother, Mark Williams, watching, I guess enviously, Tim from the crowd. His brother's just got an absolutely outstanding record, hasn't he? I mean, three out of four attempts. Really. As we go down to Michael Parsons. Yes, and we'd be a very happy captain. Mate, that was a grand final. Uh, it was a grand final half, wasn't it? It was unbelievable. I thought we were gone in that last quarter, but uh, to the boys' credit, we, we just got in there, you know? And uh, the legs, how do they feel? It's only a third game, but uh, I think there was a lot of effort out there in that last 10 minutes. Yeah, well, I can tell you, I can't walk. I am struggling. I'll be crawling off this oval. <laughs> All right, Dan Brownie, I'll let you get back in there and enjoy it. Thanks, mate. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, David Brownie. will be crawling, Jim. What a uh, game he played. Now, very shortly, Tim will be going down for the announcement of the uh, Jack Odie medal. Stephen Trigg will uh, announce that. Stephen Trigg's wife, by the way, Susie's in the Burnside Hospital with a new little baby girl, Georgia. So, a great week for Stephen as we go down to Stephen Trigg. David, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you'll agree that that's one of the best grand finals we've seen in years. And for the turn of the century, the Premiership Cup is staying at Alberton. In their sixth straight grand final, eight premierships in the 19... Uh, sorry, seven premierships in the 1990s is a truly remarkable performance. To present the Jack Odie medal, Mary Odie, and the winner of the 1999 Jack Odie medal for the best player on the ground is Port Adelaide's Daryl Paul. supporters included that nor would have come from the elimination final they've done it tough and to try and work their way back in the last quarter was a gallant effort a courageous effort congratulations to the Norwood football club terrific I'd like to welcome back Bob Hank to present the medals to the players and the coach of the winning team Bob of course 224 games at West Torrens a state player no less than 27 times McGarry Medal in 46 and 47, and an inductee into the Hall of Fame this year. To go through the players, in jumper order, number three, Andrew Ox. Number five, Brian Lees. Number eight, Brett Chalmers. Number 10, Mark Clayton. Number 14 is Tom Carr. Are you trying to guide for us, Max? Number 15, Jared Poulton. Number 19, the trigger, Simon Trigenza. Number 22, Darren Fraser. Yeah. 
Number 23, Phil McGuinness. Number 24, Brian Benke. Just slipping back to number 17. Sorry, Nigel. Nigel Fegan. <laughs> number 25, Paul Evans. Number 26, Daniel Morgan. Number 27 is Anthony Bamford. Number 30, of course, already had some jewellery, Daryl Poole. Number 31 is Julian White. Number 32, the vice captain of the club, Paul Northeast. <laughs> the excitement machine, number 33, Ricky O'Loughlin. Number 36 is Stephen Carter. Number 44, Damien Brown. The coach of the Port Adelaide Football Club, the triumphant Stephen Williams. And of course last, but by no means least, a great performer today, and he's going to hold the cup aloft, your captain, David Brown. Max Pratchier will present the cup. Absolutely fantastic, one of the hardest finals I've uh, ever played in. And to these guys here, absolutely, absolutely sensational to come back from where we were. Thanks very much. Tim, a chilling moment for Port Adelaide as they hold aloft the Thomas Seymour Hill trophy. You've done it, a great moment. Staggering, and uh, David Brown, you can just see how happy he was with the last bit of energy he had. He just shook that cup with delight. And it is a very, very proud moment in his career. As they go off to the team photo, they've won their 36th flag, Port Adelaide. And it's fitting, wasn't it? They played the first grand final on the 5th of October 1889 against Norden. The Red Legs won. But the last game of the 1900s, Port Adelaide win. As uh, we take a quick look at the goal kickers in the grand final of 1999. The Port Adelaide players enjoying that. Chalmers with three, Brown with two, Clayton with two, Tregenza with two, Beginnis, Warrior with four for the Red Legs. And the final scoreboard here in the 1999 Grand Final in the SNFL, Port Adelaide 
14 goals, 17, 101. Norwood, 14, 9, 93. Sorry we can't show you more. We'll see you next year. Bye for now.